Mullins, and he is hammered near the line of scrimmage, but manages to get up about two and a half yards. Houston Ala, the left defensive end, was the first to get there for the Warriors. Moses numbers a week ago, 22 rushes, a career high, 118 yards, a career high, two touchdowns, a career high. That's a pretty good game for a team that likes to throw the ball as much as La Tech. It really is, and that's one of the big differences between these two offenses is La Tech actually can establish a running game, as we just saw the stats and Moats. Hawaii hasn't had a 100-yard rusher in a game for, for a couple of years. So they go back to work with a spread offense in motion, Piper. The count under pressure on the bootleg. Throws it deep to the tight end. Cap and Cap has it at the 30-yard line. But count under pressure from the rusher on the bootleg. Throws a strike to the big tight end. And the chains move again from Bulldogs. Well, with an active defense, play action pass along with the screens. The boot right here does a good job. There's actually two tech players right there in the same vicinity. And Cap does a good job of going up and getting that pass right there and Luke does a good job he's a he's nifty in the backfield and he moved just enough to get out of that defensive lineman's pressure to get the throw off 26 yards on the gain as they run the sweep outside to Freddie King the wide receiver but Hawaii is not fooled Houston Allah the defensive end staying home is Freddie King at a 150 pounds in a you know, I think 5'8 <laughs> They like to use him on that speed reverse or that speed sweep. Just bring him in motion. A lot of times they bring that receiver in motion just to kind of create angles for their linemen. But at that time, they actually snap it quick and give him the football. So Louisiana Tech now lines up with four wide receivers on second and ten. Hawaii showing blitz, and here they come. McCown under pressure, drops the ball, and is sacked at the 25-yard line by Kaika Curtin. And that's one of the things, Mark, that we talked about at the top. Those are situations where Luke McCown has gotten into trouble by throwing this ball into coverage, but he also has to do a better job of recognizing this. All Hawaii did out of their 4-3 look is just move their outside, outside linebackers to the outside, and they brought them both. There's no place to step up into right there. Luke has to throw that ball away and don't take the sack. Turning 51 tackles on the year coming into this game. A sophomore from the island of Kauai down works out of the shotgun looking deep over the center of the field and has his wide receiver dj Kurt, who is hammered at the 10-yard line but hangs on david gilmore the weak safety was there but not before a 25-yard game there were so many good things that happened on this play you can see mccown sees a two deep coverage he's looking right down the middle they have dj running a post inside and when you run a post inside as a receiver that far downfield you know if you go for the ball you're going to take a shot he does a tremendous job of hanging on to it dj curry now has extended his streaks of game to the least one catch to 29 as he leads the bulldogs on this drive the ball handed off inside the moat avoids one tackler gets down to the four yard line before he kind of turned trips him up this is where it's so hard for a defense when that spread offense gets deep inside the, the plus 20 zone they still have that ability to run the football you spread the defenders out you give it to most just like they did on that play we saw hawaii do it two times nowhere out in the field but in the plus territory they did it two times when they got in tight so jack mcnell and the bulldogs relatively balanced offensive effort on this first drive second and goal from the four out of the shotgun mccallan overthrows his intended receiver eric franklin leonard peters the weak side free safety was the closest in coverage we have to be careful down here mark in, in the plus territory we we talked about luke wants to eliminate those mistakes mistakes are amplified down here in the plus territory if you don't have a guy open throw it out of the back of the end zone a great decision that time by luke so a critical play call, third and goal from the four. Plenty of time for McCown. Steps up on a pressure. Nobody open. Tries to run, but it's brought down at the original line of scrimmage, the four-yard line by Houston Alla and Mel Purcell. And they will settle for the field goal. That'll bring on Josh Scoby. On the year, 13 of 18 attempts. Of course, this will be like an extra point for him. <laughs> Absolutely. 6 to 
186 pound senior. She definitely has a future in the National Football League. Falls down, up, and it's good. And so, Wontek does not come down and answer with a touchdown, but they do get a field goal on the board. They trail Hawaii 7-3 here in Ruston, Louisiana. of the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Call your travel agent or 1-888-488-3535. To win our grand prize, answer this question. Sailing around the state of Hawaii 100 times equals how many miles? The winner receives an all-expense-paid trip to Vegas. Here's a hint. It's also equal to four times around the Earth. Hi, caller, what's your answer? Is it 100,000 miles? Congratulations, we have a winner. You won an all-expense-paid trip to Las Vegas. Hey, honey, we just won a trip to Vegas. Isn't the view great from up here? Make the smart move to your Suzuki Toyota dealers of Hawaii. Late again? Problem at my bank. They kept passing me from person to person. You know how your bank treats you? Like this. They pass from this person to that person. Tired of getting the runaround at your bank? Then you'll love Bank of Hawaii's new standby you guarantee. We guarantee the very first employee you talk to will help you with your account or personally find someone who can. Or we'll pay you ten bucks. Man, the way your bank treats you makes my head spin. The standby you guarantee from Bank of Hawaii. That's my bank. Back in Ruston, Louisiana, Hawaii leads seven to three on a beautiful fall afternoon in this part of the country. Six forty remaining in the first quarter. Scobie kicks a field goal from about 12 yards out to get the Bulldogs on the board. Scobie kicks the ball deep to John West. He will field it nine yards deep and wisely take a knee. It'll be interesting to see what LaTeX does adjustment-wise right here defensively because Chang's not a quarterback that you can really get pressure on, one, because he gets pretty good protection, but he also makes such quick decisions, it's hard really to get a hand on the guy. Again, the only third down conversion thus far not converted was the third down inside the five-yard line by Louisiana Tech. Chang has pretty much had his way offensively in the first drive as they start now on their own 20-yard line with a four-wide receiver set. Pressure rolls right. Chang looking deep down the field to Jeremiah Cochran. The ball under throw, but a huge gain down to the 30-yard line. Michael Johnson, the free safety, finally dragged him down after a 45-yard completion. And once again, you're seeing a receiver get free down the sideline right here. You need to step up and impede his progress somehow. Michael Johnson coming off that hash as a safety has absolutely no chance to get over there if you don't get some kind of jam on Jemiah Cochran at the line of scrimmage. Corey Brazil, the corner playing the cover two technique, really no jam at all. He's been having some feet problems. He was questionable coming into this game as a starter, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. Chang out of the shotgun, throws the ball outside the well, makes one, two tacklers miss, and then finally is dropped by J.T. Jackson. You know, and you saw right there, Mark, how quickly Chang gets rid of the football. That even if you bring pressure, it's hard to get to him. But Louisiana Tech is really in a tough position. If you go pressure up front, that means you have to play man-to-man -man in the secondary. They're playing a lot of young people in the secondary right now. They don't have the experience to play man-to-man -man defense. Certainly not the experience, and as you mentioned, the health is an issue with this Bulldogs defense. Second and three now for Hawaii. Three receivers line up to the right. Chang looks inside again and has an open receiver. Touchdown, Hawaii! Jeremiah Cochran is tearing the right side up. That's good for 22 yards after he had a gain of 41 on a previous play. Kevin Brown was the one assaulted. 
and they try to play a little man-to-man -man in the secondary. They're really one free right here. The inside route takes the defense away, and then Cochran comes in on the post behind him, and Chang throws another great ball. How are you going to slow these guys down today? They might have to get a new set of bulbs for the scoreboard before this one's over as Justin A.S. has the ball tipped on the extra point, but it manages to get through the upright. And Hawaii now has put 14 on the board, and we still have 521 remaining here in the first quarter. June Jones talks with his quarterback, Timmy Chang, who is 7 for 7, 145 yards. Can the Bulldogs answer? We'll have more football right after this. Seniors Heim Shimanovich and Phil Martin, the Hawaii basketball team is ready for another season of hoops and a fourth straight postseason tournament appearance. You can join the Rainbow Warrior team by becoming a season ticket holder starting October 27th at the Stan Sheriff Center ticket office beginning at 8 a.m. You may also purchase tickets by calling 944-BOES or visit our website at www.etickethawaii.com. Go BOES! There is an art to banking. It's called service. And it's our heritage here at Central Pacific Bank. That commercial appeared 20 years ago. But to this day, Central Pacific Bank's dedication to service has remained unchanged. It was the early 1950s, and immigrants and their families were leaving the plantations to establish themselves in the local communities. Yet, without a bank to call their own, many discovered the opportunities were limited. That's when a group of Nisei veterans began meeting at Alamona Park to talk of a bank that would serve all of Hawaii's people, the Bank of Central Pacific. That was 50 years ago, but then loyalty is something that never grows old. It always comes back to loyalty, doesn't it, Alex? Oh. Some Hawaii fans here in Ruston, Louisiana, as they watch Timmy Chang go on a clinic. 7 of 7, 145 yards, and Hawaii is out to a 14 3 lead. Ayat squibs the ball out of bounds around the 10 yard line. That's an ill advised kick, and that'll be a break for Louisiana Tech now, who will get the ball at the 35. Fans plan your Christmas holiday around the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, December 25th at Aloha Stadium in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Tickets are now available by calling the University of Hawaii ticket office at 808-944-BOWS. That's 808-944-2697. No place I'd rather spend my Christmas. Think we could get on that list? Yeah, I'd like to get on that list. <laughs> Tech cheerleaders here entertaining this homecoming crowd as their Bulldogs now down by 11. Motes, the single setback. Cowan works him under center, under pressure, tries to throw the bubble screen, but there's a flag on the play as well. Houston all of the left defensive end got tremendous penetration there is the officials will gather together now to try to figure out the call. We're definitely talking to Hawaii. It's hard to see what it could have been. It came from outside. But if you're Louisiana Tech, it's going to be imperative. Penalty is declined. 
second down. Bill Ape and the uh, referee here today, a whack crew, as they find the Bulldogs. Aaron in alignment. So we'll back them up and make it second down and 10 as the penalty is declined. Second down 10. Some confusion in the backfield, but he springs loose down to the 50 and tackled at the 49-yard line. A gain of 16 yards on a play you would think they'd throw the ball before Leonard Peters, the free safety, makes the tackle. I guarantee you that most goes the wrong way right here, but what it actually ends up being is almost like a counter tray. You know, fake the run to one side and come back to the other, and the timing worked beautifully right there. Hiram Peters... The strong safety was confused and ran right by Moats in the backfield. You see his numbers on the season, not a bad average for a passing team. The count outside, Transmission Davis. He picks up another 10, 11 yards to call the 11, and that'll be good for a first down. Ikaika Kernan and Kevin Milhouse were there on the stop. What Hawaii is doing early in this football game is really just the game of keeping the ball in front of you. They're going a lot of two deep zones and quarters to just make McCown and this offense methodically move the ball down the field. And right now, Luke's doing it. Bulldogs now with five wide receivers, no running back. They throw the ball outside to Chris Norwood on a little hitch, but Ikeka Kernan is there to make the stop. We'll call it a loss of one on the play. You're running that quick screen to wide receiver. It's one thing to block the pressure outside, but Hawaii is so fast. Kernan at the outside linebacker position, that pursuit gets there very, very quickly. So from five wide receivers set, now they go back to three wide receivers. Ryan Moats, the running back, back in the football game. Second and 11. Cowan, a deep drop, looks over the middle, can't find anybody, and then he's got Norwood down the sideline, touchdown, pulls off. Pass number Cowan, complete. 39 yards on the play, Leonard Peters, the free safety, was the one exposed, and Norwood makes a great catch to get the Bulldogs' first touchdown of the afternoon. DJ Curry is the inside receiver to this side, he goes down and gives Peters the free safety just enough to look at inside. He gets got peeking and forgets that he has an outside receiver right there. And Luke McCown's veteran enough to find the open guy. Jack McNell gets his football team on the board as Scobie goes for the extra point, and it's good. And McCown now answering Jimmy J. He is 8 of 9 for 121 yards in the first quarter and his first touchdown of the afternoon. We've seen an incredible display of quarterbacks. Offensive lines are blocking well. Receivers are making plays. We're not seeing very many plays on the defensive side of the ball right now. You look, look at, at that. The, yeah, the quarterback comparison. Chang is perfect. 7-7, seven of seven, 149. Had a couple of big plays, especially scrambling out of the pocket. But McCown did a great job. 8-9, 121, and a touchdown. And with Timmy Chang, you're... You have to decide what's going to be your approach or your approach very early. Are you going to come after him? If so, he gets rid of the ball so quickly like that. And then he has a veteran group of receivers that against the zone, they're going to find those soft spots where the zone is voided a little bit, Mark. And between veteran receivers and a quarterback that can throw every pass, that's the result that we've seen so far this afternoon. The question is often asked, are these... NFL quarterbacks. They certainly can throw the ball. They put up a lot of yardage in college, but it's about mechanics and decision making. Thing that we're gonna, things that we're gonna watch here today, Kelly, and talk about throughout the afternoon. Scobie kicks the ball through the upright and out of the back of the end zone. What a lay! What a lay! You're right, Mark, about these quarterbacks, and really they have everything that it takes to play at the next level. I think. In terms of the overall package, Timmy Chang, under the tutelage of June Jones, I mean, he is very developed in every aspect of it. Mechanically, he's incredibly sound and decision-making. And we know at the next level, it's about making decisions, keeping your team out of tough, tough spots. 
West Kiliakipi is now the lone setback with Chang, who works out of the shotgun. First and 10 from the 20, throws the ball quickly outside to Jeremiah Cochran. Picks up about six yards on the play before Corey Brazil can make the play. Really, the only thing that has slowed Chang down this year is when Jeremiah Cochran had a twisted ankle and was out for a couple of games, Chad Owens, number two, the second leading receiver, was suspended for a couple of games. Other than that, Chang has been this way against everybody this year. He has certainly been exposed to a pro-style offense under June Jones. As you mentioned, incredibly sound mechanically. I think sometimes you wonder whether or not He's physical enough to play at the next level as he works out of the pocket, under pressure, throws the ball, but a great play made by the Bulldog, Dez Abrams. Abrams, a red shirt freshman right here from West Monroe, Louisiana, does a great job. And Dez Abrams is one of those players that is filling in today. You can see him chasing the crossing route right there. Makes a tremendous play, not only knocking it down, but almost came up with a big turnover right there. Chad Owens, the intended receiver, and had a step on Abrams, but great recovery speed by the redshirt freshman. Third down and three now for Hawaii. And the crowd comes alive. Dang. Works inside, intended for Welch. Good coverage that time by Michael Johnson. The free safety, and Hawaii will punt for the first time today. I wondered after the first two drives whether we were going to see the punter at all today. <laughs> but here he is. But that's what you have to do if you're Louisiana Tech. Get him into third down situations and then just rally to the football. Kurt Milne, the Hawaii punter, averaging just over 40 yards a punt this season with a long of 55. Corey Brazil, struggling with a foot injury yesterday, is back deep. He's been averaging 17 yards a return. A high punt, takes it at the 27. Stutters around, doesn't find anything, and is converged on with about five or six of the Hawaii players. Kiana Alpa was the first one there, a 47-yard punt by Mills. And you, you wonder whether or not his foot bothered him when you <laughs> watch what he did after he received the punt there, Kelly. Yeah, it's kind of unbelievable. As a punter, you're taught you have to make the first one or two guys miss, but it's about speed and getting up the field right there. And you can see he hesitated to in a big way, but then when he tried to make a cut, he didn't even have it in him. I don't know exactly what he was trying to do. Set up the return, but as a punt return, you got to get up the field and get some yardage. Speaking of yardage, Luke McCown, 21 career, 300-yard passing game. He's had 11 over 400 yards. It could be 12 today, the way yeah. this game is starting. 2.37 remaining in the first quarter. Well, there you go, a completion to D.J. Curry. You mentioned earlier, has extended his streak to 29 straight games with a completion. That's good for four yards before Hiram Peters makes the stop. You know, that's Louisiana Tech's version of the running play right there. They just line three receivers out. The inside two receivers go to the flat. Luke McCown picks the, the easiest throw right there. And, I mean, that's their version of running the football. Second and six now. Hawaii showing blitz. And here they come. McCown. Bulldogs pick it up. They go deep. Great play by number three, Kelvin Milhouse. He cut off the intended wide receiver, Sean Piper. McCown looking deep, but a great defensive play. And the most important thing is this is the second time McCown has seen this blitz. They bring one from the right. They drop LeBeau from the left side back into a zone blitz, but Piper has to finish a play right here, Mark. He has to finish that play and go up and make a play on the football. Your quarterback picks the right guy out. You need something on the other end of that. Milhouse doing a great job. We call him a prototypical NFL quarter. Rated in the top 20 of the nation. He had four interceptions a year ago, just one so far this season. It's the count. Works out of the shotgun. Can't find anybody. Now he has a player deep. Number two, Freddie King. Did not make the catch. Kevin Milhouse again, closing, is able to make the play on the underthrown ball. This is one of those situations where Luke McCown has to set his feet and get something into the throw. 
He had his receiver down there early. He actually, if he could have found him a little early, it would have been a lot better. But in the end, set your feet and throw the football down the field. Dustin Upton averaging 41 yards a punt. Kicks this one very high, but somewhat short. There's a fumble. But Chad Owens manages somehow to pick it up and then is hit by three, four, five Louisiana Tech special teamers. And Hawaii now will take over on the 22-yard line. You talk about football being a game of bounces right there. That should have been a turnover for Louisiana Tech and a very big one. But Owens gets it back and tries to make something happen. Your number one responsibility as a punt returner is obviously to catch the football first, look it in. He sees, here's footsteps right there. You have to look that football in. The officials will mark it at the 23-yard line. It's a 42-yard punt for Upton. And June Jones' offensive squad stymied for the first time this afternoon on their previous drive will now take over. John West, the lone setback. Chang works for the shotgun. Looks deep on the flag. A miscommunication of some sort. His intended receiver was Wells, but there were two defenders there for Louisiana Tech. And that may be a good sign for Louisiana Tech. We have a flag down on the play. Actually, no, they, it's not a flag, but that may be a good sign in the secondary because they actually went man-to-man -man coverage at times. Free safety in the middle of the field, man-to-man -man underneath, and they did a good job. Maybe they're going to expand it a little bit and let these young guys that are filling in Line up and play man-to-man -man and see if they can do it. Rick Smith, one of the cold defensive coordinators, said we'll run a lot of 3-D, 3-underneath zone, but it's a matchup zone. We've got to play some man tendencies against this Hawaii offense. Chang works out of the shotgun, and a flag is thrown. Played, blown dead. Ryan Moses. Well, the ball was snapped. Ball starts. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Moats uh, was going to carry the ball, but uh, somebody on that offensive line got a little anxious. And you, Mark, you just hit on the thing that the defensive coordinators talked about. With Timmy Chang, you really have to mix it up, but all of a sudden you're looking in the secondary, you're nickel and dime guys that are redshirt freshmen. You wonder how much they're able to handle this early in the football game, and in a lot of cases, the first time they've been on the field in this situation. So after a five-yard penalty, Y faces second and 15 now from the 18-yard line. Again, early movement. Eddie Moss, the redshirt freshman. Start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Eddie Moss, the redshirt freshman who's filling in for the injuries on that defensive line that uh, more specifically Jamel Cage, who was out, got Jeremy Inferreira, the offensive tackle to jump early, and we go back another five yards. And Jeremy's in there because Tala Essera wasn't able to go today, so that's a fill-in on that side of the ball as well. A lot of injuries today as Wes Kiliakipi now is the lone setback. Chang looking outside, has a wide-open receiver down the sideline, a missed tackle made on Jason Rivers, and then finally driven out of bounds at about the 41-yard line by Jaron Wishman. I can, you can see the receiver getting down the field right here, but Jerome Wisham, the corner to that side, has to quit peeking inside at the quarterback and get a jam on your receiver. You're out there on an island by yourself. You have to impede the progress of that wide receiver trying to get quick down the outside. A two-deep zone, a great passing defense, but it's apparent on the guy playing the slide, Absolutely. the two corners to disrupt the release of the wide receivers. Or you can throw that defense out the window, it means nothing. So a minute 14 left here in the first quarter. The timeout's been called by June Jones in Hawaii after an 18-yard pickup. Dustin Burton, Elaine McKenzie, please meet No, Mark, it, Hawaii has the experience at obviously the quarterback position, but coming into the season, June Jones thought Hawaii was about eight deep at wide receiver, and right. they've had to play because they've had some injuries, some suspensions, and so these young receivers have gotten a lot of quality time early in the season. They can make those adjustments. Jason Rivers is about the fourth or fifth guy on the list, and you can see just getting quick down the seam. They're veteran enough to take advantage of that. Well, it's one of the reasons they are first in the WAC, third of the country in passing yards. They're averaging 330 yards per game total offense. That's from 
Timmy Chang, and again, it's just amazing. You, you mentioned some of the injuries. Sean Stennis, one of the wide receivers, not here today. Daniel Inferrera, we'll see some of him. His brother, Jeremy, we talked about playing the tackle spot. Daniel is the Hawaiian State Sprint Champion. He's had a hip flexor problem, but he is certainly a guy that can get deep. As Timmy Chang now has finished his conversation with June Jones, the fans are being entertained by that Bulldog band. It'll be very interesting to see if the defensive coordinators get a little more comfortable for Louisiana Tech as this game goes along and allows these the defenders in the secondary to match up with these receivers and see if they can respond in a man-to-man -man situation. You look at the total yards, Hawaii a buck 95, La Tech 145, and we're still in the first, first quarter, everybody, as Chang has plenty of time to throw and looks deep. His intended wide receiver, Chad Owens, and he drags it in around the 20 and is pulled down at the 10-yard line. What a great route and an unbelievably accurate throw. Well, the question I just asked was answered right here. They're in a, you can see the free safety right there going to the middle of the field. They're man-to-man -man underneath, and you have Gavin Cato, one of the fill-ins, one of the backups right there, chasing Owens down the field. A corner out from an inside receiver, and he gets open, and I guarantee you that Chang has the arm to get him the football. 51 yards on the reception as Owens now is uh, brought to the sideline. They'll tend to him. Looks like perhaps his uh, shoulder might have gotten twisted up in that pile. And they're going to call the ball on the 11-yard line. So it's first and 10 now from the 11. Under a minute to play in the first quarter. Chang hands the football off inside to Kilia Kipi. And touchdown, Hawaii. 11 yards on the touchdown. A guy they call Little Fu. You know Chris Fu about to follow who played for Pittsburgh. Built just like Fu. That doesn't get a lot of running opportunities, but a big target certainly to have to hit. And if they call him Little Fu, I would hate to <laughs> run into Big Fu because he's 260 pounds. And it's kind of interesting, Mark. They bring him down deep inside the plus territory, 260 pounds. And he not only runs over people, but he has a little finesse to get in the end zone by running around him as well. Wainai Oahu is where he is from. His Ayat is good on the extra point. Good. And Hawaii strikes again. Out of three possessions, they have scored, or excuse me, four possessions, they have scored three touchdowns now as Kiliakipi is 166 yards on the season, but four touchdowns, which gets back to what you were saying, they use them down in that red zone. Right, and that's what we've seen out of Hawaii. They've been in the red zone a couple of times now, and they run the football. It's out in the open field. They don't. They get down there in that condensed area, spreading everything out, and you can see it. Even at 260, he has some creases up in there to get the ball in the end zone, and that's what I, where I think the running game with the spread offense really stresses the defense is down inside deep in the red zone. Michael Johnson, the free safety coming up to make the tackle. He weighs 193 pounds versus 260. That's not a good matchup. I don't know that you can get low enough right then as we take a look at Timmy Chang and his numbers. 10 of 13, 232 yards, two touchdowns. Folks, again, I want to remind you, we're still in the first quarter. Yeah, he had 18 completions last week in the first quarter. <laughs> in the first quarter. So the ball set deep by Ayat, and Chris Norwood will take it nine yards deep and take a knee and It'll be difficult to get a possession anywhere outside the 20-yard line today with these two kickers. And, and oh, by the way, 21-10 to 10 right now is the score. That was the final score the last few times, or the last time these two teams met in 2000. Beautiful day here in Ruston, Louisiana. 75 degrees, relatively cool for this part of the country this time of year. Blue skies, just a slight breeze that will not affect the game at all as these quarterbacks will fill the air with footballs today. Well, if you're La Tech, you just offensively continue to do more of the same. They've been efficient themselves. You look up the scoreboard, they're down by 11. The count starts out of shotgun, hands the ball to Moats, breaks the tackle, out to the middle of the field. Spin, and finally hauled down after dragging four or five potential Hawaii tackles out to the 43-yard line. David Gilmore was in on the stop, but Moats picks up 18 on the play. And that's why that yards per carry for all these running backs on both of these teams is so high is because you just put four and five receivers out and this is the kind of creases you get. If you don't get him right there on the line of scrimmage, remember you've spread out the defense with four wide receivers in the game. This is like a slip draw they run. They did not block the defensive end, Mel Perso. And he does not 
bring down Moats on the arm tackle, and yet a big gain for the Bulldogs. Count under pressure with a free blitzer and is sacked at the 27-yard line. Hiram Peters, the strong safety, came on the blitz, and he's the first to get there to drag the count down. We saw this earlier in the game right here. Luke has to recognize this. They bring, they bring guys up on the side of him, and this time to his backside, he has to recognize it and get that ball out one way or another. Well, if you don't have an open wide receiver, go ahead and throw the football away. Don't take the sack. The Bulldogs have the ball. It'll be second and long when we come back here to Ruston, Louisiana. What's Hawaii's number one family attraction? It's Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Just 15 minutes from the Honolulu Airport, find 20 acres of water fun activities and slides like Hurricane Bay, Volcano Express, and Keiki Cove. Go to HawaiianWaters.com for more information on park hours, group sales, special events, birthday parties, and annual passes. Or call us. Get set to get wet at Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Absolutely the most fun you'll ever have in the water. Come on, come on, I'm loving it, don't you think it's kind of funny? I can't cook, but yet I'm never hungry. I'm loving it, my system's so hidden, you can hear it in. Yeah. Send work to the U.S. and Britain, I'm loving it. What's on the Taste Sensations menu? Two McTerry favorites. Choose either our savory chicken or quarter-pound beef patty topped with tangy McTerry sauce. Two great tastes for you to love. Come on. Toyota SUVs, they live for adventure. Conversation going on on the sidelines between June Jones and Timmy Chang. I don't know what he could be saying yeah. except for a great job. I mean, the guy has just lit it up here in the first half. It's a wide lead by 11, 21 to 10. And we take a look at the first quarter numbers. And as a quarterback, I'd be happy with those <laughs> after four quarters, Kelly. I don't know about you. Um, unreal. Extrapolate that 233 yards or two yards passing by Hawaii in the first quarter out over the course of the game, and you're, you're pushing a grand on the afternoon. That's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable to see. Louisiana Tech, nine rushes, 13 passes, a much more balanced approach. But that could change now. Down by 11. It's count. Backs up, looks for the screen over the middle, and hits his running back, Moats. A great block throw by D.J. Curry, but Moats will not get many yards as Abram, Hilly Mimi, goes ahead and makes the tackle. This is a great job of ex executing a screen when it was man-to-man. -man. Generally, screens don't work when it's man-to-man -man because you have a linebacker that's already hunting up that running back, but Akaika Kernan couldn't catch up with Moats that time. McCowan now will work out of an empty backfield. Lawson goes to five wide receivers. Free blitz to McCowan, able to make a miss. Scrambling right has an open wide receiver, John Piper. Who avoids one tackle and gets out close to the original line of scrimmage. Hiram Peters makes the play. We'll call it a gain of seven. We talked about guys whether these two can play at the next level. Luke McCown, it's one thing to make the guy miss right there and not get stuck in the backfield, but it's a far another thing to make that throw and keep your head down the field. That's what makes him able to play at the next level, Mark, right there. Well, it'll force a punt. Justin Upton now sends the ball. A high, spiraling kick. He sends Clifton Herbert back inside the 25-yard line, and they'll call it out at about the 23 or the 24. Hawaii leads 21-10 as we begin the second quarter. We're back after this. Sears Hawaii is a proud supporter of University of Hawaii Athletics. You 
Brody's Tire Company. Come to Lex Brody's Tire Company, where you'll find cheap gas and cheap tire prices hand-in-hand hand with our award-winning service and great Michelin tire prices. Lex Brody's Tire Company. Cheap gas, cheap tire prices, award-winning service. Why buy tires anywhere else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lex Brody's Tire Company. Got a favorite lunch wagon that serves up some of the best food in the islands? Throughout November, News 8's Lyle Caldera scours the islands to see which lunch wagon reigns supreme. Email us at khnl.com and nominate your favorite restaurant on wheels for the Cheap Eats Lunch Wagon Battle. Sunday, Third Eye Blind guest stars on an all-new American Dream. An older man. What do you think I should do now? And a dangerous decision. You're selling drugs? You're going to prison! Then, law and order criminal intent. Her ex-husband was found murdered. The twist is, who's next? What a lucky guy that'll be. And Rob Lowe in the lion's den. A friendship is shattered, and saving him <laughs> will put a lawyer in jeopardy. I guess he did some real damage. You think? All new American Dreams, followed by law and order criminal intent and the lion's den, NBC Sunday. Back in Ruston, Louisiana, homecoming weekend for Louisiana Tech, young and old getting together, enjoying a little football here on Saturday. La Tech down right now by 11, 21-10. After a barrage of points in the first quarter, we have 13-38 remaining in this first half. Skiliakipi now lines up deep with Chang in the backfield. Chang works outside, an interception, Corey Brazil. What a play, they tried to throw the out on Brazil. What a tremendous play he made. We mentioned he had foot problems. They x-rayed his foot. Didn't know if he'd be able to play. And he comes up big early in this football game. And Louisiana Tech needing something good to happen. And this is a good thing to happen right here. It's forced Timmy Chang into a bad decision. The thing that LaTeX did that time, they changed the defense. Instead of being zoned underneath in that too deep coverage, they were man-to-man, -man, giving Brazil the opportunity to break on that football. Jason Rivers, the intended receiver, trying to throw the out route. You can't miss as a quarterback back inside if you're going to throw the out. If you miss, miss it out in front of him. So a big break now for Louisiana Tech. They take over the 35-yard line. McCown outside and misses his intended receiver, Tremissian Davis, who is a, from West Monroe, Louisiana High School. And can't miss like that. I mean, that's not a big game. That's a wide open receiver. You have to make that completion. And if there's one thing about Luke McCown, it's throws like that where he doesn't get his feet stepped and he's really drifting away from the line of scrimmage. And therefore, the ball drifts with you and he missed him that time. Second and ten. Hand off to Moats who fumbles the football. But he's tackled after he recovers. It'll be a gain of about one yard on the play. Brings up third down for the Bulldogs. And if you're just joining us here at Ruston, Louisiana, it's a whack shootout between Hawaii and Louisiana Tech. Mark Malone along with Kelly Stopper with you here. Glad you could be with us. If you like the passing game, you're going to love this one. Oh, boy. We've seen some unbelievable numbers just in the first quarter. Timmy Chang already throwing for more than 230 yards in the first period. And Luke McCown is trying to answer for the Bulldog. Under pressure, throws the deep ball up for grab. Almost intercepted by Kelvin Milhouse. A late decision by the quarterback almost resulted in the interception, and that's going to bring out the field goal team. And Eric Franklin does a good job right at the end of this play of becoming a defender and knocking this ball down. That's the type of decision that Luke McCown has had trouble with. That's what led to 19 picks on a year ago. He has to just throw that ball away and don't risk taking the opportunity away from Scobie, one of your best weapons on this team. Maxi Cossey, the holder here. For, oh, the ball is blocked. A 51-yard attempt, but Hawaii blocks the field goal. It is the second block of the season now for Scobie, who already this year has a long of 53 yards. A matter of geometry right there. The tra tra trajectory is lower, obviously, because it's such a long field goal. That's why La Tech's defense has to, or offense has to be efficient, is they have to get deep into the red zone, take advantage of every opportunity they have against this Hawaii defense, because Chang, obviously, is going to do it on the other side of the field. 
Leonard Peters, the starting free safety, looked to be the one who got a hand on it. So after getting the ball handed to them, Montek hands the ball right back to Timmy Chang in Hawaii. Outside, looking deep. Hitting wide receiver, another interception. Kevin Brown, the other corner from Oak Grove, Louisiana, Oak Grove High School. A senior comes up with a second consecutive interception now of Timmy Chang. And I really like what La Tech is doing in the defensive secondary. They're mixing up those coverages. And if there's anything that can get Timmy Chang out of his comfort zone, it's giving him different looks down in and down out. And that time they were too deep in the secondary, but they did play some softness. And that time the quarterback did the right thing. Kevin Brown just turns and releases with that receiver, looking back at the quarterback. A tremendous play. All right. So La Tech. The ball back at the 46-yard line. So they fake the reverse, but Moat manages to pick up maybe two yards on the play. Maafala is also in on the tack along, uh, or on the tackle, excuse me, along with Ikaika Kernan. And it's one thing for Louisiana to take the take tech to take the football away, Mark, but they also have to be productive with those takeaways and turn those directly into points. Pickup of two on the play brings up second and eight now for the Bulldogs. Piper in motion. Blitz. Town cannot get out. And Gianni Alapa is there to make the play. The strong side linebacker. They did a good job of pointing out the blitz. But then they did a very poor job of handling and picking up the blitz. Moats did a great job of coming from the left side. Right there, you can see that Moats recognizes it, goes out and gets one guy, but Gonzalez just flat gets beat inside. It's the third sack now for that Hawaii defense. Meanwhile, the Bulldog defense has not been able to get Timmy Chang on the ground today. Account over the right side and finds Chris Norwood on the hook at midfield that'll be enough to move the marker up but it won't be enough for a first down it's a gain of 15 on the play and kevin millhouse was there to disallow the potential first down the fans here are wanting coach mcnell to go for it but this is exactly where you have to be disciplined don't let the productivity of hawaii take you out of your own game right here Clifton herbert back deep to receive for hawaii the upton punt angled for the right side hits inside the 10 and bounces into the end zone, a 48-yard punt for the Bulldogs. And after a shootout in the first quarter, things have calmed down, but Timmy Chang and Hawaii are back on the field when we come back. He's the only love I have in my Jay. life. Jay! So don't tell me who to love. You have no idea how I feel. Jay? When it comes to value and versatility, the Subaru Impreza is hard to beat. Like the Impreza 2.5 TS Wagon and the 2.5 RS Sport Sedan. Both share the proven Impreza platform with full-time all-wheel drive, ABS, AC, and much more. Or the powerful new Subaru Forester 2.5 XT with 210 turbocharged horses under the hood and the best safety rating in its class, it's true. It doesn't matter what you do, there's a Subaru for you. And online, Hawaii's best online fairs. Book an inner island round trip for only $133 and earn 1,000 bonus miles. Hurry and book your trip today with Panda Online, Hawaii's best online fairs. KHNL.com, bringing you the news you want when you want it. Local, national, international, sports, entertainment, and health news, all at your fingertips. At home or at work, it's the future of news from people you trust. News 8 and KHNL.com, it's time to get connected. 
Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana. Homecoming weekend for the Law Tech Bulldogs, young and old, getting together for a little football. Law Tech trailing by 11 right now, 21-10, with 10.33 remaining in the game. After a outburst of points in the first quarter, we've had a couple of turnovers. Hawaii, two, the interceptions by Chang on consecutive plays. Louisiana Tech, no turnovers, but they had the long field goal attempt by Scobie Block. The Warriors at the 20-yard line. Chang hands the football off inside to the big fella, Kiliakipi, who hammers his way out for about seven yards on the play before Crow and Cato, strong side linebacker and strong safety, combine on the tackle. The big thing about those turnovers early in this game is La Tech was able to do absolutely nothing with it. They didn't turn any of them into points, and that's what you have to do. Not only get the turnover, but you have to get points on the boards after the turnover. Look at time of possession. In Louisiana Tech, more plays, certainly more time, but again, had to punt the ball a little bit more. I mentioned the two interceptions by Chang, but other than that, they have been a scoring machine. Second and three. The little jailbreak screen almost intercepted again by Corey Brazil, who has one on the afternoon already. I think that foot that Corey was nursing early is coming back around right now. He's starting to make some plays, and I really like the position that the coordinators are putting him in right now as they're going man-to-man -man underneath that two-deep zone, and it allows Corey just to react to that screen and get up there and almost make a great play. So Hawaii now faces their third, third down of the game. They're one for three on the day and third down conversion. Chang outside, a little flip on the screen play, and that's going to be enough for a first down. And both of these teams do a great job with the screen game, and Hawaii is one of the best in the country. This is, some people call this a crack screen or a jailbreak screen. All the receivers are coming back inside the linemen are going outside, and there's a train wreck in the middle, and the receiver has enough ability to get up inside and get the first down. The receiver was Daniel N. Ferreira, the Hawaii State Sprint Champion, who's been bothered by a hip flexor, fle flexor excuse me, to see some action in today's game. They show blitz and hand the ball off inside with a big halfback. Kilia Kipi hammers his way out to the 45-yard line. Des Abrams is there on the stop, a pickup of 10. Well, if you're La Tech and you're kind of squeamish about bringing pressure, and then you get stung like this because the outside linebackers went outside and came from the outside position, and then they run that big fullback right up the middle. Great timing, maybe just lucky play calling, but great timing nonetheless. Four-man rush. Chang looking deep. Has a wide receiver. Jeremiah Cochran cannot pull it in. As they take a shot deep again. Kevin Brown was right there on the coverage, and they continue to test this Bulldog defense deep. And Kevin Brown comes up big again, and that's what the secondary is going to have to do. Opportunities are presented when injuries happen in the football game. Chang picks out the right guy, man-to-man -man outside, bump and run, but Kevin Brown does a great job in coverage right there. And then at the end, Cochran does a good job of coming to the defender and not letting Brown end up with interception. Second and 10 now for Hawaii. Three wide receivers split to the right side. Shank, plenty of time. Tries to throw the ball underneath to Chad Owens. Slightly underthrown, and Owens can't hang on. And I think Louisiana Tech defensively right now is finding a little rhythm. That time they went with a zone blitz. They're mixing it up in a big way defensively, and Chang is having a little problem right now. When you can make the quarterback hesitate as a defensive player, you win. And that time, Chang hesitated. The defense wins again. Brings up a third down. The fourth such opportunity for Hawaii. They're two for four on the day, 50%. Chang throws the ball deep and finds his intended receiver, Welch, around the 20-yard line. Des Abrams finally forces him out of bounds, and they're going to call it the 22. 
This is a corner again that, that stings Louisiana Tech. It took a long time to develop. Welch finally gets outside, and Cato almost gets his hands on the ball, but that's tough. And again, Louisiana Tech, Mark, was in man-to-man, -man, a free safety deep, and I don't know that that matchup is really favoring them with only one safety deep. Get another safety on the hash right there that could have responded to that throw. 33 yards on the completion to Welch. And Hawaii threatens again. They hand the ball off, but they don't fool anybody. Kilia Kipi was the ball carrier number 16, but Trevon Brown is right there to make the play. Kilia Kipi, this is what you have to do with 260 pounds. You can't let momentum take over right there. Get him before he gets going and just get him on the ground. Jack McNell, the head coach of the Bulldogs, doing an admirable job here with the injuries he suffered on his defensive side of the football. Welch in motion for Hawaii. Chang works out of his shotgun. Under pressure and a Bulldog sack. Their first of the afternoon at the 29-yard line. And to get Timmy Chang on the ground is a rarity. We know that. This, they've only given up. 12 sacks on the year, I believe, coming into this this game. But this is a cover check. He had time to get this ball off, but there was absolutely nobody open in the secondary. First one there, number 49, Wendell Crow, is the first to get there. As we have an injured player, Uriah Manoa, the right guard, number 69, is being helped off the field, and that'll bring in Phil Kaufman, who was a junior from Honolulu, Hawaii, is backup number 67, 6'1, 291, to be brought into the game. They were a little banged up coming into this game, Mark, so that's something that could snowball very quickly. They're young to begin with on the entire offense. Offensive front, yes, but the entire offense, they're only playing, putting up these numbers and only playing one senior coming into this football game. Well, why lost three players to the National Football League on their offensive line from a year ago. They're starting freshman on the left side, Ezra and Satelli. Hawaii is averaging almost 11 yards a play right now. That's every snap. Third and 17 for Chang. Again under pressure and again sack. Two sacks in a row. This one from Trevon Brown, the right defensive tackle. You got to get pressure any way you can. A good job zone blitz right here, man to man in the secondary, and then just cave in the pocket and get him to the ground. Third and long is not a bad situation for Hawaii to be in. They convert big time on third and long, but you can't if the quarterback's on the ground. Brown moved to uh, the defensive tackle position over the center and beat Fa'avai, the uh, center number 59. A good job there as Jason Wielden now will hold for an attempted 49-yard field goal. A yacht, the ball up, plenty of leg, but no good. No good. So the Bulldogs dodge a bullet. They remain 11 points behind Hawaii, 21-10. We've got more of the second quarter still coming. For shipping, postal, and business services, come to the friendly, the convenient, the UPS store. Let us help you. Sending and returning packages, copy services, shipping and office supplies, computer time rental, and mailbox and postal services at the UPS store. With new low rates direct from UPS and low international rates. For friendly, convenient shipping, postal, and business services, let us help you at the UPS store. Papa John's Pizza Hawaii uses the finest ingredients to make your pizza hot, fresh, and tasty. With 15 locations on Oahu, there's a Papa John's near you. So when it's time for pizza for your family and friends, call your local Papa John's Pizza Hawaii. Hey Hawaii, get Papa's Luau. Two large pizzas with two toppings, carry out or delivery for only $19.99. Just call 979-PAPA. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's Hawaii. 
Calling all volleyball fans, on Sunday, October 19th, T-Mobile is sponsoring the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Match against Pac-10 member Arizona at the Stan Sheriff Center. Come out to cheer on the Wahine players, currently ranked number two in the nation, and be sure to sign up for the T-Mobile contest to win some insane prizes. For tickets, call 944 bows before it's too late. See you there. Go Rainbow Wahine! Beautiful day here in Ruston, Louisiana. A WAC conference matchup between Hawaii and La Tech. La Tech dodging a bullet. Hawaii missing a 46 yarders. We take another look. Mr. Justin Ayat was arguing, yeah, that it went right over the post, but you can see that official standing right underneath. There is no better better vantage point than his right there, so you have to go with what he says. So we're at 21-10, 6.15 remaining here in the second period. Bulldogs to the 31. Hand the ball off to Post, the running back. He hammers his way up for a gain of four yards on the play. Hiram Peters, the free safety, makes the stop. Louisiana Tech really does a nice job of mixing in their running game with the spread offense. There are holes in there, but you have to be effective. You don't, it's not about quantity, it's about quality of runner. They do a real nice job. They've been much more balanced run pass-wise than Hawaii has here in the first half. McCown, under pressure. Tries to get away, but then takes the sack. Down at the 17-yard line, Hiram Peters, the free safety. Two plays in a row now he makes, and again, this is decision-making. Yes, to throw the ball, but when not to take the sack, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely, and you don't want to take the sack deep inside your own territory. That's one place not to take the sack, but Hawaii has found something right here. That's the second time, as you said, that Peters, the strong safety, has moved to the outside, and they brought him a true secondary blitz, and right now, Louisiana Tech doesn't have an answer. It's the second sack of the day for Peters as they continue to send him. And if you want to be efficient, Mark, third and 22 is not the way to get it done. Strike the draw, maybe a screen, but the town works out of the pocket, flush right, avoids the tackle, gets to the sideline, driven out at about the 26, 27 yard line by Houston Allah and Travis Lavoie. Well, you just said about the draw, the screen, that's generally what you see in third and 22, especially backed up deep in your territory like this, but they actually had fly patterns on. They wanted to go for it right there, and Hawaii just did a good job of covering the deep receiver. Count picks up six yards on the play, but it'll still bring up a third, and, or excuse me, a fourth and 16 as Dustin Upton, the punter, comes onto the field. Clifton Herbert, number 21, is deep for Hawaii. A wobbly kick. Herbert takes it at the 35. Plenty of room. Sutter steps, breaks the tackle. He's down the right side now. And then finally hauled out of bounds at about the 44-yard line by Leonard Peters. So Wise back in business. Good field position. Leading by 11 after a 40-yard punt. We're back right after this. Introducing the all-new Nissan Quest, a revolutionary minivan featuring five Skyview windows, an innovative center console, automated side and rear lift doors, and fold-away second and third row seats. Moms have changed. Shouldn't the minivan? Maui's Warrior fans, here's a contest just for you. K5, the home team, wants you and a friend to go to the game and cheer for the UH football team at Aloha Stadium. Enter to win at Maui Toyota, Maui County Employees FCU, and Miyaki Concrete. Then be ready to fly to Oahu, take in the game, and spend the night in Waikiki. It's a contest just for Maui's Warrior fans. So enter to win, and you could go to the game, courtesy of these Maui sponsors and K5, the home team. This November, NBC delivers more guest stars than ever before. The final season of Friends heats up with Greg Kinnear and the return of Emmy winner Christina Applegate. You are not going to regret this. Dylan McDermott on Will and Grace. Frazier braces for Hurricane Lilith. Oh, dear God. Alicia Keys and Hilary Duff on American Dreams. Plus, dramatic guest stars. Bob Newhart, Matthew Perry, and Margaret, and more. The guest stars shine. NBC November. 
431 remaining here in the first half. Hawaii with the football now leading La Tech 21 to 10. Hey fans, plan your Christmas holiday around the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. December 25th at Aloha Stadium in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Tickets now available by calling the University of Hawaii ticket office at 808-944-BOWS. That's 808-944-2697. Of course, Hawaii played in that bowl a year ago. John West is in the backfield now for the Warriors. Good field position. Throw the bubble screen outside, and he comes out the back end. Jason Rivers inside the 30-yard line, a pick up of about 15 yards. Derek Farrell makes the stop, but the chains will move for the Warriors. Hawaii does a great job of running the screens, and this is really with these offenses. The screens essentially mark their running game. They run it from all different angles. The, the crack screen like we saw in that time, the slow screen, the slip screens. They do all kinds of stuff, but it's in place of their running game. Jack McNell in constant communication with the booth. His team trails by 11. 4.05 remaining in the first half. They run the football up inside. And they'll get down to about the 15-yard line. John West does a pretty good job as we take a look at this Hawaii offense. The defense, that's another story. You look at George Lumpkin, the defensive coordinator. And he's done a pretty good job. What's interesting is we saw all those points scored in the first quarter. We haven't really seen much, but we've seen more quarterback pressures. Yeah, this is the thing. Lumpkin made a great decision to bring pressure on the Luke McCown. They were having their way with Hawaii's zone offense early on, but this is the difference. They brought the strong safety Peters up on the line, and they're getting after him right now. So Chang, the three wide receivers set to the left side. Hands the ball off to West again. He finds the corner, and then it's hauled down West out of bounds by Olandis Williams. Six yards on the pickup. It was a sweep we've sw seen twice in a row right here, and the difference this time, Williams gets to him. The first time, it was actually Michael Johnson up there as a safety coming out of the secondary that didn't get to him, and that's the difference. Those guys have the responsibility. They're all spread out. The safeties have to make the play. Antonio Crow, the outside linebacker, got hooked. West got outside of him, but as uh, we yeah. said, Williams making a good play. Kilia Kipi now comes in from the nine-yard line to go to work out of the backfield with Jay. Inside the throw intended for Jeremiah Cochran, but a great play by Corey Brazil, who's had a pretty good first half. One interception, a near interception, and a couple of pass breakups. He really has been active for a guy who was questionable clear up into the snap right here, and Cochran just goes in, in in the end zone and runs a slant route, and Corey Brazil does a great job of timing his break with the football. So Chang will face a third and four now on the nine-yard line. Cochran resets to the right. Stack position. Chang dumps the ball outside. Killian Kiki, the big running back, who has just hammered at the 11-yard line by Antonio Crow. What a hit. Antonio Crow has the running back right here coming out of the backfield man-to-man. -man. That's why the swing pass doesn't work right here. A good job of not only with the coverage, but then you have to bring Keely Akipi, 260 pounds, you have to get him to the ground. Well, along with Antonio Cove, Byron Santiago has moved up from a backup to a starting position because of the injury to Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Hamilton. Made a big hit there as Ayat now will attempt the field goal. From 28 yards. This time, no question, it goes through the middle of the uprights, and Hawaii extends its lead now to two touchdowns over Louisiana Tech. As Timmy Chang, who's got off to a red-hot start, is now getting fine point instruction from June Jones on the sideline. And from June Jones, as a former quarterback, talking to his quarterback now as the head coach, the coaching never ends, and he's one of the best really in the country at any level of doing that but Louisiana Tech really that's a victory for them Mark if you can hold that offense to three points as opposed to a touchdown you've done your work for the day 
And the Bulldogs still have 239 remaining here in this first half. So plenty of time for an offense such as theirs to score a touchdown and make this a one-score game at half. And really, the way this game has gone, Louisiana Tech defensively made some good adjustments. They've s slowed this Hawaii offense down just a little bit. Conversely, Hawaii's defense has had the upper hand against Louisiana Tech's offense. Tech's offense needs to get it going here a little bit. Timmy Chang, 14 of 23 for 288 after that blistering start he had of 7-7 seven to seven to start the game. Ball fielded deep and then fumbled in the end zone, but brought out not a good decision to about the 14-yard line by Jaron Wisham. Yeah, not a good decision. When things start bad, they usually finish bad. He should have just downed it and gave Luke McCown and his offense a chance to go from the 20. So they're going to set the ball at the 14-yard line. Making it 86 yards, John, from McCown and the Bulldogs. We take a look at how Luke's done here in the first half. 12 of 18, just 149 yards to touchdown. And again, more importantly, no interceptions. We spoke at the top. You cannot throw interceptions if you look for count. Comes out, has a crossing wide receiver across the middle. And that'll be out to the 30-yard line. D.J. Curry is the receiver. And we have a slow Hawaii defender to get up. That would be Mikaika Kernan. He's limping. They're calling for a trainer now to count on the field and see to him. Chris Norwood also limping on that play. A pickup of 16 on the pass play. And the clock will stop with 227 remaining here in the first half. This may come down to who can stay on the football field. Luke McCown, the quarterback, we talked so much about from the top of the show as we look at Ikaika Kernan on the ground. He's come to the sideline now. He's been holding his side. Maxi Causey, the backup quarterback, a senior, six foot five, 200 pounds, from right here in West Monroe. He went to West Monroe High School. Is now in the football game. Wait a second, McCown's back out. I just, I think Luke was just using that time to kind of got stunned, almost like a boxer, came to the side sideline, using that time just to get his breath back a little bit. So Cosby back to the sideline as the count is in the football game. He's got his tank of turning off the field, and we're back to work. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Blitz. They pick it up. McCown looking deep. Had his intended receiver. Piper, but he can't hold on. Absolutely a perfect throw as well. And picking out the right guy once again. Piper, an original walk-on. Got a scholarship back in August. You can see he sees a man-to-man -man coverage safe, safety in the middle of the field. You know you have one-on-one -on -one outside. He finds him. You have to make that play as a receiver. Illumimian, the left cornerback, good coverage there. We mentioned the walk-on with a scholarship. The coaches say probably the toughest kid on the team, runs the best routes of any of the wide receivers for Louisiana Tech. As Hawaii comes with the blitz again. Again, they pick it up. McCown over the middle, badly overthrows his intended receiver, Eric Franklin. And a good job by La Tech picking up the pressure, but then it looked like Piper and Franklin ran in routes into the middle. They had two receivers right there together, and they, it looks like one of them didn't run the right route. Yeah, usually you have a dig route. you got a post going exactly. over the top, some sort of a double level right there. Two of eight on third downs for Tech today. Critical third down. Count, flushed again out of the pocket, moves back up inside. Has a wide open receiver, Norwood, who catches the ball, and that'll be enough for a first down. Out to the 42-yard line, Alapa is there on the play after a 12-yard pickup. Luke McCown does a great job of, as a quarterback, keep the play alive, but also keep your head down the field and find the open guy like he does there. 150 remaining here in the first half. The count goes back outside the door and hits him on the hook. Breaks the tackle. Back inside and then brought down at the 44-yard line. 
A wide defender trying to go for the defended pass or the, the interception, and instead it's a reception for 14 yards. Ellen Mimian to that side, and you have to make the decision as a corner whether you have time or not. That time, he made the wrong decision. The count under pressure, the blitz, the screen out to most. Makes one tackle miss down the sideline, cuts it back, gets a block, the 20, the 10, it dragged out inside the five yard line to the two. What a great effort by most. Leonard Peters, the free safety, finally saves the touchdown. And I love the play call right here. When you're marching in two minutes, the defense likes to go pressure right there. Great set up on the screen, great play call, and then get most of the ball and let him go down the field. Down the field, indeed, 41 yards on the pickup. They're going to call it the two-yard line, and we have a minute 25 remaining here in this first half as Jack McNell, the head coach of the Bulldogs, brings his offense to the sideline to talk it over. Well, and Conroy Hines, the offensive coordinator for La Tech that time, great awareness of knowing that when you're the defense and you're letting the the offense go down on a two-minute drive, you have to do something to break that momentum. That time... Hawaii came with pressure. Great call for pressure is the outside screen to the running back, and Moat stung him with it right there. We saw the both the safety and the linebacker come off the right side. They run the screen back to the left side away from the blitz, and you're right. It's a perfect call. Whether it's happenstance or not, it's the right time, the right call. 16 of 24, 233, and a touchdown. Again, the numbers creeping up for McCown, who we said today could have a big day and move up to the number three spot all time in NCAA history in terms of total passing yards. I think this drive, Mark, is important for a lot of reasons, but one of them is Louisiana Tech's defense made some good adjustments and slowed Hawaii down a little bit. Now if Louisiana Tech's offense can get it going, this could be a great game. Scored by the Bulldogs would make it a one-touchdown football game at halftime. But then again, Timmy Chank can get it back with a minute left, and they go right down and score again. From under center, they hand it off to Moats. Cuts it back. Is hit in the backfield by Hiram Peters. The safety is uptight to fill. And we'll call that maybe a gain of a half a yard at most. There's Conroy Hines, the offensive coordinator, who has great eyes from the box. They're going to use one of those timeouts right here. But, yeah, he's done a great job of play calling. And sometimes calling plays is pretty easy when you have a guy like Luke McCown at the quarterback position. Well, we see two different personalities from this La Tech offense. A spread offense. We've talked about how much more balanced they've been in the middle of the field, but now they've gotten down inside the five-yard line. We see them more two tight ends to try to hand the ball off to Moats. They only have two yards to pick up. You wonder whether or not that's the right call to make. However, you have a minute nine left. It's only two yards. You could run it three or four times. Right. I think that's the key mark right there is the time that they have left. They have a couple of timeouts. They had actually three going into that last play. But that's what Louisiana Tech can do. They actually have tight ends on their roster as opposed to Hawaii that doesn't even list a guy as a tight end. They can get down there in that plus territory and give you a little different look than they do in the open field. George Lumpkin, the defensive coordinator of Hawaii on the field after meeting with his defensive squad. And they're not going to say he gained more than about a half a foot on that play. It's going to bring up second and two now, or second and goal from the two, with 1.05 remaining in this football game. First half. Out of the shotgun. They're going for the fade. They had a wide receiver, Sean Piper, open, but the play made by Illuminian. Excuse me. <laughs> Illuminian, yeah. Illuminian. A lot of vowels in that name. And an interesting choice. They had trips to the opposite side, and they decided to go one-on-one -on -one with Piper and Illuminian and, and throw, really, the stop fade is what they were going to do. The receiver acts as if he's going to the traditional fade to the back of the end zone, and then the quarterback throws behind him. But Illuminian made a great play on the football right there. Cowan, career yards passing, 11,454 as of this play. Under pressure. Slides outside and finds his wide receiver. Touchdown Bulldogs, D.J. Curry finds a way to shake open in the back of the end zone, and the Bulldogs have pulled it in seven. D.J. Curry started on the opposite side of the field at the slot position, 
works his way across the back of the end zone, and Luke McCown, like you said, Mark, slides just enough to his left to get that throw off, and then, more importantly, make an accurate throw to the receiver in the end zone. So despite this barrage of points early on by Hawaii, the Bulldogs have managed to stay in there and answer back. This extra point will pull them within seven points. Josh Scobie, no problem. And Louisiana Tech now trails 24-17 with one minute left here in this first half, which is, by the way, plenty of time for Timmy Chang and the Hawaii Warriors. Yeah, no question about that. They, they can put points on the board, board in a hurry, but what I like is Louisiana Tech seems to have made some quality adjustments defensively and they're slowing that offense down right now and and Luke McCown is getting a little bit better feel of the game and you can see right there he slides just enough from the pressure to allow him to get the throw off to the receiver. We talked about the mechanics of the quarterbacks they go to the next level. Here's something that you have to do in the NFL. You rarely get to set, plant, throw. You got to slide. You got to throw on the run, throw around people. That's a great example of his ability to read, feel pressure, slide to where he wants to throw the ball, and then throw it accurately without having a perfect setup. Absolutely. Perfectly said. And the guy who comes to mind is Dan Marino. Absolutely. Dan couldn't run out of the pocket to save his life. But I'll tell you what, he didn't get sacked very often. A, he has a quick release, but B, he could move just enough in the pocket to always get his throw off. John West is deep for Hawaii, and uh, he will not be able to field that Scobie kickoff that goes through the back of the end zone. So the Warriors now will take over with one minute left here in the first half. As we take a look at these two quarterbacks, we said there'd be a lot of balls in the air. And so far, we said there'd be 100 balls in the air. So far, we've had 49, and Timmy Chang is getting ready to get after it again. And again, McCown's done a great job. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. If I had the telestrator going, I'd circle that no interceptions about six times yeah. because he's almost unstoppable when he throws one or fewer interceptions on the game. Philly Akipi now the big tailback at 260 pounds is in the backfield with Chang. He's working out of the shotgun. <laughs> They hand it off to Kili Akipi. He picks up maybe three, four yards on the play before a host of Bulldog defenders drag the big back down. Antonio Crow, the strong side linebacker, the first to get there for La Tech. And the hurry-up offense for Hawaii with two timeouts is like five minutes with most teams in the country. <laughs> Pick up a four, second and six. Chang, plenty of time. Look, pump. Throws over the ball, tip, and intercepted. Interception, Louisiana Tech. Gavin Cato, excuse me. Jaron Wishon, number 24, intercepts the ball. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. There's also a flag on the play. Way back at the 16-yard line. I think the flag is going to come after possession, after the interception, with a Louisiana Tech guy who actually then becomes the offensive player making a block in the back right here. The return, illegal block on the return team. 15 yards from the end of the run. Louisiana Tech remains possession, first down. Let's take a closer look at this. Again, you can't block below the waist. Somebody gets hurt in that situation. Make Timmy Chang move a little bit. The throws off and inside. And the opportunistic defensive secondary that was banged up is starting to make some plays right now. He knows what to do with it. Wisham, he's also a punt returner. He knows what to do with it when he gets it in his hand. So, opportunistic defensive play for the Bulldogs. McCown goes back to work out of the shotgun. It looks deep. A wide receiver open, but also the defensive back is right there. We have an interception, so it gets turned over again. David Gilmore was lying in wait in the two deep, and it was an ill-advised decision by McCowan. That's the type of interception that really led to that jersey hanging in Luke McCowan's locker that we referred to. There's a deep safety, safety set right there. All he has to do is play the ball in the air and then go up and get it at the end, and he does that. You could say, well, you've got a few seconds left in the half. We're going to take a shot, but you can't play against that defense. Come back, stare at one receiver running into a deep safety and just throw it up. Absolutely. Just not recognizing the defense that's out there. You don't run a fade and throw the ball up. That needs to be a driving throw along the sideline if you're going to throw it. Kili Akipi now back in the backfield as Chang continues to work out of the shotgun with 16 seconds remaining. They hand it off to the big back. Is hammered at the 25 and drags a couple of Bulldogs out to the 27 yard line. So 
so June Jones will let the clock run down here in the first half and as suspected we have a ball game Hawaii leads 24 to 17 now over the Bulldogs La Tech doing a great job with adjustments on defense and finding a way to score late in this first half to make it a football game so we'll be back with a little halftime special here a seven point ball game in this whack shootout we're back with more football right after these messages Your baby ain't sweet like mine. Your baby ain't sweet. Try as they might, they still can't catch us. The GMC Sierra. Get a Sierra 1500 extended cab available with a light duty power pack, including 5.3 liter V8 HD trailering and more, and a $1,000 discount. Add the discount to cash back for a total value of $3,500. See the pros at your Hawaii GMC dealers. With the complexity of today's digital world, when I need office equipment, the last thing I want to do is shop all over town. I want to make one call, open one account, and work with a company that has the experience to get the job done. Business Works of Hawaii is that one company that can do whatever it takes to get exactly what you need. From Minolta digital black and white or color copiers to Altogen digital IP phone systems configured for 1 to 500 people. When you want to go to one company that takes care of everything, call us and consider it done. It's time to enjoy thy. Luke McCown, the quarterback for Louisiana Tech, warming up on the sideline. His Bulldogs trail Hawaii 24-17 after the first half. If you're just joining us, it was a barrage of points early on, led by Timmy Chang and Hawaii. Yeah, we wondered if the defense was going to stop anybody on either <laughs> side of the field. And Timmy threw everything to everybody. You can see the two touchdowns there, different variety. And then McCown comes back, and they... They leave a receiver open down the sideline, but that's the way it started off. But in the second second quarter is where we saw the defense make adjustments, and it slowed this these offenses down, trying to get a little bit of pressure. And McCown made a great play there at the end, and that was important because that came after those adjustments where Louisiana Tech's defense was starting to play well, but their offense wasn't doing much. That was a big touchdown to D.J. Curry. Completion to D.J. Curry right there to bring it within a seven-point ball game as we look at the rushing yards. Skilly Keepy has been big with 62 for Hawaii. Third down conversions, neither team really setting the world on fire. and Really, Tech has just really dominated in time of possession, almost 17 minutes of the first half. You know, Mark, it's about productivity with the time you have the football and also those turnovers. Chang had three interceptions in the first half, but the important thing is Louisiana Tech wasn't able to take advantage of any of them. They had, they just gave the ball back twice, and they had the blocked field goal the one time. Take a look at Timmy Chang's number from a year ago in this game. He was 31 of 51, threw for nearly 400 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception, and a 27-10 win over the Bulldogs. As we take a look at his numbers today, he's on pace to just obliterate those yardage numbers 14 to 23 288 two touchdowns their three interceptions have as you mentioned Kelly really cost this Warriors football team but they lead by a touchdown right now over Louisiana Tech 24 to 17 we are at IA Stadium Joe IA Stadium in Ruston Louisiana on a perfectly beautiful day 75 degrees not a cloud in the sky it's homecoming weekend for the Bulldogs Justin Hyatt will kick it off for Hawaii Back deep, Eric Newman and Jerron Wishon. A ball tried to be exchanged and fumbled. It's on the ground. 
and Jerron Wisham recovers it. An ill-advised passing to the football, trying to get it to the guy you want to return it, and it comes back to bite the Bulldogs. Wow, what a way to start the second half if you're Louisiana Tech. Communicate right here. I have it or you have it. The one of you decide and the other one go up and throw a block, but in the end, you have to make a decision. Guys are flying down the field to hit you right in the face. So Jack McNell now down by a touchdown has to try to sort out the situation on the special teams as he watched Timmy Chang when the Warriors line up at the three-yard line. First down 10 for the Bulldogs from the three-yard line. McCown to Motes. Breaks a tackle in the backfield. Out to the 10, the 12. And brought down at the 13-yard line by the strong safety Peters. Houston Allah should have had him in the in the backfield, if not for a safety right there. But Motes has done a great job of making the first guy miss. Right there should have been a tackle, but Motes does a good job of making the first guy miss and then getting some positive yardage. So that gives Louisiana Tech some breathing room now as they work from the 13-yard line. Back of the shotgun again is McCowan. Again to Motes. Again, makes a couple people miss. It gets out near the 20-yard line. We'll call it the 19, a gain of six yards before Akika Kerna makes the tackle. Look at Moses' numbers today. 11 rushes for 66 yards. He's coming off a game in which he rushed for 22 times a career high, 118 yards a career high, and two touchdowns a career high against UTEP. And the week before, I believe he had 99 yards, so he was right on the verge of having two games in a row where he rushed for over 100. Out of Dallas, Texas, Bishop Lynch High School is McCown. Goes back to the air, throws the little hook route outside to Chris Norwood. That'll be good for a first down. And if the quarterback and the receivers have this kind of timing, the defense essentially can do nothing about it, and that's what Luke McCown and this receiving for. They're going to have to be that efficient to score points continually, really, against this Hawaii defense. Good timing route there between McCown and Norwood. The ball is now placed on the 26-yard line. Back to Motes again. This time, Motes cannot escape the potential tackle of Mel Purcell, number 98. And that has been the key to Motes' success, as you mentioned earlier. He's been able to break the first tackle. That time, he could not. Now, Hawaii did a good job this time of just, first of all, stringing it to the sidelines right there, making bounce it out to the outside, and Purcell does a good job of bringing him to the ground. Just stay home and let him come to you. Loss of two on the play brings up second and 12. Cowan looks for the crossing route and has his wide receiver wide open, D.J. Curry. He's forced out of bounds near the 40-yard line by David Gilmore. A gain of 17 yards and another first down for the Bulldogs. A great job by Luke McCown finding his crossing receiver. You see him looking to the right right there. His crossing receiver, D.J. Curry, just comes into the play. That's the way you do it. Look downfield, let the other guy just come, come into your line of vision and then throw him the football. So after starting inside the five-yard line, the Bulldogs out to the 40, first and 10. Count from under the center, the screen route inside, the middle screen to most. McCown puts a little too much on it under heat. Persol was the first one there in the quarterback spot. That could have been intercepted. Oh, absolutely. This is very dangerous. When you have a screen pass that's undeveloped or the defense just flat snips it out, throw the ball away. Throw it into his feet right there. But bad things happen when you try to make something happen out of a screen that doesn't look good. So McCown back under center. This is off the time signal to run play for the Bulldogs. Comes out, quick drop, looks back inside, finds his open receiver, Eric Franklin. He's out to the 48-yard line, a gain of 13, a first down. I love to see a quarterback go from one side to the other. He's looking to the left, nothing there, come back to the right. Number 19 set right in the hole right there. Franklin doing a good job, but the defense had something taken away one way. Don't give up on the play. Come back to the other side if you have time. Look at the yards per game passing. 
316 yards, second in the WAC. It's worth second to Hawaii, averaging over 330 yards. They hand the ball off to Moats, cuts it back up inside, finds a three, breaks it back home, takes the official down with him out to the 37-yard line before Peters and Gilmore make the stop. A gain of 11 and another Bulldog first down. First down. <laughs> Lester Brown does a good job right there at the end of just pushing the defensive end by, giving Moats the opportunity, and sometimes the officials just become part of the playing field. <laughs> Whatever decision he makes right there is going to be the wrong one, so just stay there and see what happens. That's the umpire, and, Hugh Douglas, and I tell you, that's a scary thing oh, when that man. mass of humanity is coming out, Jay, and you can't get out of the way. First and ten. Back to Moats again. Moats, hard to bring down at the line of scrimmage, wiggles his way for about four or five yards before Keani Alpha makes the play. We'll call it a gain of five. We're seeing a running explosion on this drive by Louisiana Tech. You think ball's in the air when you think Luke McCown and obviously Chang on the other side, but they've gotten it done running the ball on this drive. And what it does is it slows down that Hawaii offense. I mean, you, you'd like to be able to do that. We talked to Jack McNell and he said, I'm not sure if we can. We don't want to change too much, but this is working right into their game plan. Fumbled snap by McCowan, but he does fall on the ball. And helped up immediately by a Hawaii player. And what you just said, Mark, is a, is a great point. Because, because of the explosiveness of the Hawaii offense, it, sometimes it makes the opposing offense try to do too much. And this is obviously what you don't want to do. That ball was right there. Luke just has to primary things first, fundamental things. Take the ball from the center. And that time he just didn't do the first things first. Jack McNell been fighting a lot of odd plays here with his Bulldogs as they face third and seven. Under pressure, McCown outside directing traffic and then finds his underneath receiver, Chris Norwood. And that's going to be a gain of about four yards. It's going to bring up a decision now for McNell. It's going to be close to a first down, but they'll come up short, about a yard short. You know, Luke McCown has great feet, and that's something that has really bailed him out. You can see right here, stay in the pocket, then you have to bail. The boy is on your, on your tail right there, direct traffic, and then don't make the bad decision. That's the most important thing at the end. The fans, the players, asking Bicknell to go for it. And he says, all right, guys, let's do it. I'm showing some trust and faith in you. You've got fourth and one. We trail by a touchdown. It's early second half. And they've spent too much time talking about it. The count will now have to call a timeout. Wonder whether or not McNell will rethink his decision. Yes. So as Louisiana Tech discusses their fourth down options, trailing by a touchdown with 10.24 left, we'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Proud sponsor of the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Call your travel agent or 1-888-488-3535. All right, we need a name for our new chicken breast strips. Something that says these new chicken breast strips are real, like our old ones, but much bigger because they're sliced right from the breast. Hmm, bigger breasts. Real breasts. <laughs> Big, plump breasts. Huge breasts. Um, big, uh... Don't go there, Phil. Look in Kakaako, in Kalini, it's Easy Man from Easy Access Storage System. Call Easy Man for a great storage plan. 592-0220. Low prices, free pickup, total security. Call Easy Man at 592-0220. Is precision engineering a luxury? or an necessity? Is performance the measure of capability or of appeal? Does sumptuous leather provide a soothing ride or a more exhilarating one? However you pursue perfection, may it always be with passion. 
Led by seniors Heim Shimanovich and Phil Martin, the Hawaii basketball team is ready for another season of hoops and a fourth straight postseason tournament appearance. You can join the Rainbow Warrior team by becoming a season ticket holder starting October 27th at the Stan Sheriff Center Ticket Office beginning at 8 a.m. You may also purchase tickets by calling 944-BOES or visit our website at www.etickethawaii.com. Go BOES! Got a favorite lunch wagon that serves up some of the best food in the islands? Throughout November, News 8's Lyle Galdera scours the islands to see which lunch wagon reigns supreme. Email us at khnl.com and nominate your favorite restaurant on wheels for the Chief Eats Lunch Wagon Battle. 10-24 remaining now in the third quarter. La Tech trailing Hawaii 17-24. Jack McNell is talking over his team. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. They are 60% on the season in fourth down situations. The wide pitch to most. Down the hill he comes. First down, Bulldog. Leonard Peters, the weak safety, finally forces the little running back out of bounds. Anytime you give the defense a quick read like this, if there's any penetration initially whatsoever, usually it's a bad play offense. If you can see along the line of scrimmage, absolutely no penetration by Hawaii equals a first down for La Tech. Four yards, they'll call it, on the pickup. Moves to change. First and ten from the 23. As we look at the time of possession, Louisiana Tech has just dominated. Count under pressure again. A bad decision. Could not find an open receiver. Stayed too long. Takes the sack by Mel Purcell. That is exactly where Luke has to get better. Decision making either deep in your territory or the plus 20 right here. You're in field goal range. You cannot give up a sack. You have time to make a decision. He obviously can he can throw the ball clear over the film house in that end zone right there. You have to do it. Get the ball out. Purcell's had an active day today for Pago Pago American Samoa. 6'5", 258, a sophomore. Brings up second and 16 now for McCowan and the Bulldogs. And they go back to both. No, this time McCowan keeps it on the bootleg, but Hawaii is not fooled whatsoever. And he is dropped by Kevin Jackson, the backup right defensive end. Well, the little limited running game that a spread offense has, this is the next step off of that, that run that they run right there. We've seen so many times to Moats. The next step is the quarterback keeps it. But number 11, the defensive end of that side, Kevin Jackson, has contained. He was disciplined and just sniffed it out. So after a decision to go for it on fourth and a yard, they pick it up. They find themselves now on a third and 17, having worked backwards. A sack, ill-advised bootleg. And a wise showing some pressure and then backing off into the zone. Cowan directing traffic, rolling right, throwing, and just finally throws it away before he's forced out of bounds by Jackson. LeBoy, LeBoy got some pressure on him as well. And, and but the thing I like in the end, Mark, great decision. LeBoy's actually coming from the middle linebacker position right there. He's usually a defensive end. Right there, throw the ball away. You have Scobie to go in there off the sideline and kick yourself a field goal. It will not be a short field goal, however. You're looking at about 48 yards. Remember the sack a couple plays ago right there. It added to this field goal right here. His longest of the year, a 53-yarder. He is 2 of 4 from this distance on the season. Plenty of leg, not a problem, and he missed it. So Josh Scobie, the senior, cannot convert on the long field goal. And Louisiana Tech still trails by a touchdown. Hawaii will have the ball next. Enjoy a glorious fall weekend in a beautiful hotel with great food and friends. Sound tempting? Spend a delightful fall weekend at the Golf Digest Golf for Women Couples Classic, October 24th through the 26th at Grand National on Alabama's Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Stay on site at the luxurious lodge. I'm Hatsy Riley, Alabama's first lady. World-class golf, great hotels, wonderful people, all here in Alabama.
Football fans, it's time again for the Pigskin Picks, the winning weekly forecast game from the Honolulu Advertiser, KSSK, and the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Every week, look in Monday and Tuesday's Honolulu Advertiser for your Pigskin Picks ballot. Weekly prizes include a Las Vegas trip with $500 spending cash. Plus, get a chance to win a year's use of a Pontiac Sunfire from Jackson Auto Group. All this, plus other great prizes. Play Pigskin Picks and score big with the Honolulu Advertiser, Hawaii's newspaper. Salutes you, Mr. Really Bad Toupee Wearer. Mr. Really Bad Toupee Wearer. You think it looks natural, but it couldn't look phonier if it had a chin strap. A look at you. Made of space age fibers, it can repel anything rain, wind, snow, and especially young women. I don't think so. So make it a Bud Light, mister. And here's another for that thing on your head. Toyota SUVs, they live for adventure. Up by a touchdown, June Jones and his Hawaii Warriors take over now with 9.03 remaining in the third quarter. They get the ball on a 30-yard line after a Josh Scobie missed field goal of 48. Michael Brewster now is at the running back spot, number six, along with Chang. He goes quickly inside on the bubble screen and finds Daniel Inferrera, the state champion sprinter from Hawaii, who gets out to the 45-yard line. Byron Santiago, the will linebacker, makes the play after a 14-yard gain. You know, if you miss, the first guy in pursuit right there that misses linebacker, right there he misses, then all bets are off, especially when you're talking about the sprint champion has a ball in his hands. It's a great play. It's a great design. But I'm going to tell you, as a wide receiver, you've got to have some courage. Because Absolutely. Because there's a lot of big bodies in between the hashes in college and professional football. Shane. Flight rolls right. Finds his wide receiver, Chad Owens, who's knocked out of bounds after a nine-yard gain. Jaron Wisham, the field corner, is there to make the play for the Bulldogs. The linebacker that missed the play on that last time was actually Terrence Alexander, who's playing because of an injury. But that's exactly right. When a wide receiver gets the ball at, you know, at a buck 75, a buck 80, coming back, it's like driving against traffic in L.A. I mean, you're driving against some big bodies inside, but that's why they, they do that, is they have the ability to make people miss. So, Chang, 16 completions on the day, 37 is his average during the season. Second and two for Hawaii. Throws the ball outside again to Owens. Owens drags a tackler down to about the 27-yard line. That tackler was Gavin Cato, the strong safety, but it's a pickup of 19 for the Warriors. And absolutely way too much room. And what we don't see real good right there is Chad Owens just has way too much window to work in. They went to that cover one free, which is a safety in the middle because they're bringing pressure. They're man-to-man -man everywhere else. And a linebacker matched up on Cho and Owens does not bode well if you're Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech told us they've got great running linebackers. They use them like defensive backs, but stretching it against this Hawaii defense, or offense, excuse me. Pressure, Chang under pressure, run to the sideline, and then sacked. They'll mark it down at about the 31-yard line. Wendell Crow, the right defensive end, was the one who'll get credit for the sack. You know, and if you're Louisiana Tech, you really have to pick your spots of when you think you're going to try to pressure Chang because a lot of times these things are this time they get pressure on him. It works, but they had good coverage in the secondary as well. He had a little time to look downfield, but there was nobody open. The third sack now for that Bulldogs defense today on Timmy Chang. And instead of second and short, we've got second and long. They show blitz. The outside linebacker comes, fumble, a fumble that changed the Bulldogs say they have it. It looked like Antonio Crow, number 51, was at the bottom of the pile. And that was just a bad handoff between number six, Michael Brewster, the reserve back, and Timmy Chang. 
this was going to be the traditional draw play just right there, right up the middle, but he just doesn't get the ball. The quarterback has to look it in. The running back has to give him that that window or bread basket to, to put the ball in, and something just did not look it right there. It's the first time, really, Brewster's been in the game today. That might have something to do with the timing. Fourth turnover on the day now for June Jones and his Hawaii Warriors. Louisiana Tech, the ill-advised interception late in the first half as they work most back inside. Continues to break tackles. Out to the 40, the 35, still dragging tackles. Down to the 29-yard line. Illuminian and Kevin Milhouse, the two corners are there to finally bring the little back down. What a run. 5'8", 201 pounds. Look at that opening right up the middle. Hawaii is leaving the, the center guard area vacated. Generally, it's because they bring defensive line studs or linebackers into there. They brought nobody, and the offensive line for Louisiana Tech is just keeping that lane open for Moats. 36 yards on the pickup by Moats. They go to him again. Moats, the cutback. Has the size over the right side. Again, brought down by number three, Kevin Milhouse. But not before he gets inside the 20-yard line. 12 yards on the pickup. The last couple of weeks, this offensive line for Louisiana Tech has really settled in. They were banged up early in the year. The last couple of weeks, this offense has gotten on track. And right now, the adjustment Louisiana Tech has made is they're going to emphasize the running game in the second half. You talked about, Mark, in the first half, Head coach uh, Bignell didn't know if they would be able to do that. They're finding a way to do it here. Back in the shotgun now. Cowan. They still hand it to Moe, but he's up the middle. Down inside the five and drags Packers to the two-yard line. Wow. You're talking about dashing the defense. Peters and Gilmore are there on the stop after a 14-yard pickup. And watch right here. If it comes into the screen, number 72, right tackle, Adrian Gonzalez, leading the way right there. It's really like a power G play, but out of the shotgun, and Moats doesn't need much crack and, and opportunity to get up inside. Either block somebody or get out of the way. Because <laughs> That's Ryan Moats is carrying the football. 18 rushes, a career-high 145 yards today. They continue to run the ball. Most chances and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Tell you what, what a beautiful drive of just adjusting and stuffing it right down the throat, running the football. Well, we'll take another look at it. All right. The only thing that stopped him here was the end zone. He had to run out of the back if he was to go anywhere else. They, they didn't even slightly slow him down on that drive. 148 yards rushing on the day so far for a team that averages just 111 yards rushing coming in today. Tell you what, they're on to something right now. Louisiana Tech can run the football. Scobie, the extra point, <laughs> and that's good. And we have ourselves a tied football game. Four plays, 64 yards, and La Tech has made it 24-24 over Hawaii with 6.41 left. But Timmy Chang in Hawaii gets another shot when we come back. Hey, what is it? I realize I love you, but as long as you're with Jessica, there can never be anything between us. Listen, Cassie, there's no need to cry. Besides, I've got really great news. You're leaving Jessica? No. I just saved a load of money on my car insurance by switching to Geico. I saved. I thought that meant something to you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The magic of wood is its transformation into a work of art and a joy for those who make it appear. Woodcraft helps you make the magic. Hobbyist or contractor, Woodcraft has what you need. From Fox on Micro Tools to Powermatic, Festool, even titanium hammers, metalworking equipment too, and some of the most exotic woods you've ever seen. So if your magic is woodworking, drop by Woodcraft, Kalani Street near Y. Camilo Road. To win our grand prize, answer this question. Sailing around the state of Hawaii 100 times equals how many miles? The winner receives an all-expense-paid trip to Vegas. Here's a hint. It's also equal to four times around the Earth. Hi, caller. What's your answer? Is it 100,000 miles? Congratulations. We have a winner. You won an all-expense-paid trip to Las Vegas. 
Hey, honey, we just want a trip to Vegas. Isn't the view great from up here? Make the smart move to your Suzuki Toyota dealer of Hawaii. The sophomore running back, Ryan Moses, is taking over this football game today. Yeah, he looks a lot like Joe Morris with that 20 on his back, and he's running like Joe Morris. Josh Scobie kicks this one almost through the uprights and out of the back of the end zone. A 24 all game. A four play drive that covers 64 yards. All four plays runs by Moses. A two yard touchdown run brings the game tied 24 all. All four plays right down their throat. It wasn't like they were running wide. They were running between the tackles, actually between the guards, and saying, defense for why can't you stop us? And they didn't even give it a lick that time. So Brewster fumbled the ball that allowed Louisiana Tech to take over and then score on those four plays. He's back in the backfield with Chang again. Boyd's the rush and then throws the ball complete to Cochran. That'll be a short game. You happen to see Hawaii play Tulsa. You see some similarities in that game and this game, Kelly. Oh, absolutely. If, if you're a Rainbow Warrior fan sitting at home on the island watching this, it looks just like that game. Early on, Chang was hot. They scored a lot of points. Tulsa's defense adjusted. Tulsa's offense began to take over late in the game, almost like a heavyweight fighter that's not used to going deep into the into the deep round. And, and in the, at the end of the day, Tulsa just flat wore them out. Well, again, the second week on the road has they've been away from Hawaii. Played a record six games on the road, and Chang works back outside again. It looks like it's Cochran again out to the 36-yard line. Kevin Brown, the first Bulldog defender there, but it's a gain of 11. And Cochran is limping. And Cochran came into this game with a questionable ankle, and, and this isn't a play you want to be running if you have a questionable ankle right there, but he does a good job. Again, we talked about you need some courage as a receiver to come back inside with the football, but he's big enough and agile enough to make it happen. First and ten from the 36. Okay. Under pressure, steps up and looks deep. A wobbly pass. Intercepted by number 34, Gavin Cato. And the defense records its fifth turnover of the game. This is also a similarity to that Tulsa game. And if you're Hawaii, you don't want to hear that. But it's striking right now because late in the game, this is the kind of thing that Chang started to do. He started to press a little bit. This is man-to-man -man coverage, good coverage all the way down the field. And the thing that happens right here, Mark, this ball comes way late. And Cato's just there playing the center field all along, just waiting for that ball to come down to him. Daniel and Ferreira would have probably beaten the man's coverage, but you don't throw it there. you got a middle fielder Absolutely. sitting back there reading read the quarterback. So first and ten now for Luke McCown. They go back to work on the ground. Moach gets the ball, makes a tackler miss, picks up maybe three yards on the play. And the crowd now getting into it. We can hear them in the background starting the chant for Moats. It'll be interesting to see if Hawaii can make some kind of adjustment defensively. They have Suba Onga, they're, they're all American defensive tackle in there. We really haven't called his name at all, and I actually don't know if he's on the field. Maybe he was dinged up and he isn't even in there. No, I see his number. Number 97, right over the center. Incomplete pass intended for G.J. Curry. Keani Alapa was there on the coverage, the strong side linebacker. You know, we haven't even mentioned Isaac Sobaonga today, and that's really the type of player that they need to step up right now. When the offense is gashing you defensively by running the football, you have to stay on the football field and make plays. Sobaonga now in the ball game, taking over for Semiseva at the defensive tackle spot. Count. Time in the pocket, looks outside, finds Moats, Moats down the left sideline, to the 50, and finally forced out of bounds. 
Elamimian, the corner, finally gets the little back out of bounds, but not after a big game. I'll tell you what, this little man has made a difference, number 20. He not only can run the football, and we've seen that that last drive, 64 yards of hitting right in the mouth, and there's one example right there. It's tough, hard nose running right up the middle. Time and time and time again. It's not the variety of plays. It's the way this man is carrying the football. He's carrying it with an attitude and a sense of urgency, and he's getting it done. And then that last play, it was isolated on a linebacker catching the football out of the backfield. And Jack McDell understands his impact on this game. He calls his number again, this time for eight yards before the middle linebacker, Chad Kiliamuku, makes the tackle. And I love the flexibility, Mark, that Louisiana Tech is showing offensively. They didn't come in believing they could sustain drives by running the football. A, they have, so they have therefore run it more. And then most has become the the hallmark player for this team so getting the football not only running but also catching the football out of the backfield 21 carries 159 yards on the day so far for ryan most the sophomore out of dallas texas and mccown saw something he didn't like calls a timeout we also see a flag on the play i think the play clock mark might have might have ran out actually they're going to give it to him no but that play clock was down to double zeros and that's another thing that he, you have to, as a quarterback, you have to give your offensive line and, and your running backs and receivers time at the line of scrimmage to see things and then to make an adjustment if you need to, and he, he ran out of time that time. Well, it's the second time out now for Louisiana Tech here in the second half as they talk about it on the sideline. By the way, fans, plan your Christmas holiday around the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, December 25th at Aloha Stadium in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Tickets now available by calling the University of Hawaii Ticket Office at 808-944-BOWS. That's 808-944-2697. Mark, have you checked to see if we're on the list yet for that game? Have, have you got any information for us? No, but I'm willing to talk to anybody who's in control of that list. I hear you. I'll back you on that. <laughs> well, you mentioned the timeouts, Mark. They've already burnt two timeouts, yeah. which in this close of game could be a factor. One of them was a fourth down play, but that one was just a misuse of the clock. Well, 347 now in the third quarter as McCown is back on center. Safeties move up for Hawaii. Most still carries the ball. Hit the line of scrimmage, but it'll be enough for the first down. Mel Purcell. The defensive end was there on the stop. Number 33, Hyman Peters, was that safety for Hawaii that's moving up to the line of scrimmage. It's good time for Luke McCown to maybe look downfield a little bit if you start getting those guys sneaking up. They're a drop back team, but it's a team that might want to think about some play action here off the one safety Great point. Get those point. safety sucked up and get a post in behind them. The blitz coming. They hand off the boat. Makes one blitzer miss, and it gets up for about six yards on the carry. Gianni Alapa makes the tackle, and you can see that defense. They're blitzing. They're moving up. Bicknell is going to have to do something differently offensively now to counter that. What makes the game so intriguing is the adjustments. You see the defense lineman right there, the right end, number 11, Kevin Jackson. He doesn't even respect the play fake or McCown in the backfield. He just goes right down the line of scrimmage, takes that angle right to Moat. Six yards on the pickup brings up second and four now. Play action. Oh, Cowan makes somebody miss and then wise and just throws the football out of bounds. One of the best decisions he's made today when he's been in trouble. I love the decision, and you can you can tell that the fans here appreciate it. He even turned and waved to the fans. <laughs> 19 interceptions will do that. The fans understand how to win games. Quarterbacks understand how to win games. Make him miss. Melt to play as long as you can, and then throw the thing away. Great decision. Fans cheer. He waves. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Right. I made the right decision. That's Louis, beautiful. Louis Funga was the one who put the pressure on him. <laughs> McNell must have heard us. They go to the play action. They just don't block it up well. He works out of an empty backfield now and tries to cram one in over the middle near the 30-yard line. That'd be close to a first down. The intended receiver, D.J. Curry. Intended on that play and dependable. I tell you what, when they need a play, McCown likes 
to throw the ball to D.J. McCurry. Just coming from his inside slot position, it's questionable whether he caught it. Now it's questionable whether he got the first down or not. McNell has already had to make a decision here in the second half on whether or not he would go for a fourth and short. They went for it, got it. I think they got it. Stretch the chain out here, and yes, indeed, they have. So Bicknell will not have to make a decision this time other than what play he's going to call. Right. And you continue to let your quarterback put him in a position to be successful, but also to make good plays. Again, you're in field goal range. Luke needs to understand that. If you don't have time, throw the ball away. Let to play another play. And it, it, unless for that, don't be bashful. Stick a ball in there if you have to. Back to Moat. Moat picks his way through the defensive line for maybe two yards on the play before Dikaika Curtin, the linebacker who was carried off the field or helped off the field in the first half, comes in to make the play. The thing, Mark, that Mike, that Hawaii is doing right now is remember where most was productive is right between the tackles and really even tighter than that between the guards. Now they're starting to stack that middle a little bit with their linebackers. They're starting to condense it down. Now it's time to go outside or, like you said, play action pass. Well, they cut their splits way down with four wide receivers, and there they go. Split wide right, three wides now. Looking for the screen, and again, McCowan under pressure, doesn't set the screen up well. It looks like he's under pressure early, continues to back this. The linebackers snip it out. It's, it's almost cost him twice now on turnovers. You're right. Hawaii has done a good job with that play. The screen to the back, Hawaii has done very well with. The screen to the wide receiver, La Tech has had a little bit more productivity out of it. But you're right. You have to set your feet, invite the rush, and then continue to retreat. Hawaii hasn't allowed him to do that. you got to talk to your offensive line. But hey, guys, screen means you got to block him first, then let him come. Just don't open the door and let him rush you. Blitz coming from Hawaii. Plenty of time. Complete to Curry. Down inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. First down. You know, Mark, being an old quarterback like yourself and like I was, there's nothing more beautiful than an offensive line picking up pressure. You can see Hawaii bringing guys up the middle, but this is the result because of great offensive line play. McCown had time to hit D.J. Curry, a crossing route against pressure. That's a beautiful thing right there. A great catch, not your average catch right there. Good job offensively all the way around. 19 yards on the pickup by Curry. And another timeout. So either in their celebration or miscommunication, they've burned their last timeout. There's also a flag on the play. We'll see if they'll pick it up again this time. Illegal substitution. Offense breaking the huddle with 12 players. Uh, Five yard penalty. Still first down. Timeout. Louisiana Tech, that is their third and final charge timeout. Well, there's the defensive coordinator for Hawaii, George Lumpkin, who all of a sudden has his hands full here. Even though McCowan and that Georgia Tech, or excuse me, Louisiana Tech offense made a mistake there, he's had his hands full in the second half. Yeah, I think Louisiana Tech has made some great adjustments. Primarily, they learned who number 20 was in their backfield, Moats. He's carried the ball well the last couple of weeks. They never imagined they could carry it this well today, but that's been the difference, is running the football right up the middle. Lumpkin just made an adjustment, though. They started to bring pressure from the defensive side, but they're bringing the pressure up the middle for that very reason. That's where they've been hurt. Well, there's the offensive coordinator right now for Louisiana Tech. The chess match going on as we look at Conroy Hines. He takes care of the quarterbacks and also calls the plays from up top here at the press box. That's what makes this game the greatest game on the face of the planet is that chess match. Absolutely. You know the adjustments. Now it's Hines' turn. What's his adjustment? They've taken the middle away. They've taken your running game away. Now what are you going to do? Jackson comes running on the field, the backup linebacker, and all of a sudden we've got an offside. I think Lester Brown, number 68, the left tackle, got in a little bit of a hurry because he was pulling. Ball snap, ball start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. So you got an illegal substitution, bad tunnel call. That cost you five, and you lose the timeout. And then after all that, 
if somebody jump off sides. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't good things when you're in a tight football game that probably is going to go down to the wire. And in the plus territory, all those things are really magnified by about 20. And as well as La Tech has played here in the second half, this ball game is still tied at 24 all with just under a minute now to play in the third. First and 20, they go to work with Moat. He whistles it up in there to about the 16-yard line before Kevin Jackson makes the tackle. Gain of four yards on the play. We talked about how you stop that as the defensive end, who they don't even block, needs to just come right down the line of scrimmage. Number 11, Kevin Jackson. You can see him chasing him right there, and he gets to the play. The next step is the quarterback has to play action off of that or just boot off of that. The other thing that Hawaii's doing is they're looping their defensive tackle out there to now be the contained guy. Second and 14. Town looking deep, looking in the end zone. Touchdown. Yes, touchdown, touchdown. Eric Franklin. Leonard Peters, the free safety, was there in coverage. But McCowan squeezes it in for a 12-yard touchdown, and the Bulldogs go on top. Uh, this kind of throw is what separates Luke McCown from about every other quarterback in the country. He's open right there, but he has a small window to get it in get it in there that's what the difference is between high school college and professional football what constitutes an open receiver gets smaller and smaller as you move up the ladder Callan, a happy kid his family here we talked to his brothers at halftime as josh scobie lines up for the extra point plenty of leg for that right down the middle and louisiana tech a big third quarter leads now by a touchdown over hawaii 31 to 24 as this homecoming crowd is getting jacked up. And if you're Hawaii right here, you have a big question mark starts to rise in your mind right now is can we play into the fourth quarter? You can see the protection up front is outstanding. And then Eric Franklin runs a good route inside on that safety and then brings it to the corner. And Luke McCown makes absolutely a perfect pass. That is a scary pass to make. And you yes. mentioned he had great time, and you need that kind of time to be able to step and throw. But that is a that's, that's a guy that's got ice water running in his veins when you make a throw like that. Yeah, that's a throw you have to make in the plus 20 because that's all the bigger the window gets down there. But what you want to do as a quarterback, as you well know, lead him to the outside. If you miss, you miss wide right there. Jack McNell has done a great job here in his five years as the head coach. And his football teams are 20 and 2 and leading after three quarters. So he's got to hold on to this for another 18 seconds. <laughs> And he's in good shape. That's how much time we have left in the third quarter as John West lines up deep and <laughs> will let it go out of the back of the end zone. Kobe has been unbelievable with touchbacks today. Well, if you're Louisiana Tech, if you get into the fourth quarter, still being ahead there 20 and 2. But also remember, if Luke McCown only throws one interception or less, they're 16 and 5 as him as the starter. So the, both of those things are in play right now. Now you take a look at that first two drives. Chang is 7 of 7 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. Since then, just 12 of 23. Four interceptions. Now that's so what is so difficult to overcome if you're the Hawaii football team. Brewster in the backfield. Chang works outside. To Cochran. The catch is made for a six-yard gain. We'll call it seven. And if you're Hawaii right now, you don't have to change anything. You're down by a touchdown. You're the most prolific passing offense in the country right now, really. So you just do what you do, and you can score points. You have plenty of timeless, obviously. Chang looks outside, finds his wide receiver, Say hey, Palmele, and Jaron Wisham is there on the stop. Six yards on the reception. Well, we have an interesting fourth quarter ahead of us right here, my friend. Interesting, I would say, indeed, is Jack McNell and the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs are ahead of Hawaii now as Luke McCowan makes a gunslinger's throw to put the Bulldogs up 31-24. We're back with the fourth quarter right after this. 
What's Hawaii's number one family attraction? It's Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Just 15 minutes from the Honolulu Airport, buy 20 acres of water fun activities and slides like Hurricane Bay, Volcano Express, and Keiki Cove. Go to HawaiianWaters.com for more information on park hours, group sales, special events, birthday parties, and annual passes. Or call us. Get set to get wet at Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Absolutely the most fun you'll ever have in the water. Budweiser, the king of beers, and K5, the home team, want to send you on a football flyaway with the University of Hawaii Warriors. All you have to do is go to your favorite Budweiser and Bud Light retailer and look for the entry box to win a trip for two to the UH Nevada football game at Reno on November 15th. Win airfare for two, hotel accommodations, game tickets, and more. Enter today. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, and K5, the home team. Proud supporters of the University of Hawaii Athletics. Tailgating is tastier with the Zippy's coupon in Friday's paper. With the Rainbow Wahine and head coach Vince Gu hard at work preparing for another year of tough competition, you can get ready for the basketball season by ordering a set of Wahine basketball season tickets. Season tickets are on sale now at the Stan Sheriff Center ticket office. You may also purchase tickets by calling 944-BONES or visit our website at www.etickethawaii.com. See there. Go Bones! Even Tech, the La Tech mascot, breathless after three quarters there as the Bulldogs are up 31-24 over Hawaii. Chang, under pressure. Makes the rush and miss down the left sideline and finally forced out of bounds at the 37-yard line by Antonio Crow. A pickup of five yards on the quarterback scramble. There aren't many times that you get to Chang, but when you do, you have to catch him and get him on the ground. That's the one thing Ju Jun mentioned about Chang that you obviously can't coach is that little ability is when you have a defender on you that really comes unblocked, you make him miss enough for you to get out of the pocket and get your throw off. So a negative potential sack turns into a five-yard gain, and that'll make it second and five for the Warriors. A lot of folks near the line of scrimmage for Louisiana Tech, but they bail out. One free blitzer, they dump the ball outside to Brewster. Makes somebody miss back inside out to the 44-yard line before he's dropped by Byron Santiago. Louisiana Tech is mixing up the defenses right there. You can see Kernan trying to get outside right there with the with the offensive player. But Brewster has way too much speed, but that's what, the risk you take if you're La Tech. Man-to-man, -man, you also play man-to-man -man on the backs as well. Six yards on the game will be enough for a first down. Chang quickly outside to Stennis. Dennis picks up about four or five yards. And it was actually Antonio Crow out there on the coverage to play before. Hawaii loves to do that, is catch you in man-to-man -man and release their running backs, what they call a free release. And then Timmy Chang just takes him if he has to. 370 yards on the day so far for Chang. Brewster on the draw, makes one man worse. Miss, Corey Brazil rides him out of bounds around the 30-yard line. There's a late flag over there on that side as well. This could be a hold on the wide receiver trying to hold that block that long. That would hurt. 18 yards on the pickup, but you're right, a penalty against Hawaii. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Still second down. You know, the wide receivers are taught to work hard on running plays as well. 
but you have to know when enough is enough. And when you're a r running back, it takes you a long time to get out to the outside. It's a long time for that corresponding wide receiver to hold his block. Shadow's getting long here, and Rustin is shadow of the press box. Hangs over the field. Second and two. Split. Little bubble screen outside. And out to about the 38-yard line is number 84, Britton Komenet. An eight-yard pickup before Trevon Brown hauls him down. Louisiana Tech was bringing both outside linebackers right here. Hawaii had the perfect play called that bubble screen. Corey Brazil misses in number one, and then it was off to the races if they didn't get great pursuit from the inside. Three wide receivers to the right. They hand the ball off to Brewster. The draw. Makes two tacklers miss and drags three more up near the 25-yard line. Michael Johnson was there to make the stop. 17 yards. And we've got a ruckus going down on the field right now as we take another look at this play. Hawaii is taking a play out of La Tech's playbook right here. Just trying to run the football. They've seen it work so effectively for Louisiana Tech. So Juden Jones who wants to be able to throw the football every play, says, why not us? You hear booze now from the fans here. Louisiana Tech, one of their players, is down in a pile of about six Hawaii players. Yeah, the odds were good for Louisiana Tech on that play right there. Unbelievable. No flag on the play, however. Take a closer look. That's not where you want to be. Well, Samson Satelli right there has his helmet ripped off. So we didn't see what actually started it. But in the end, you had one bulldog against a whole lot of Rainbow Warriors right there. Jack McNell just having an out with the official right now. Well, he's talking about that. They had his player down giving him the business right there. He's on the right hand. Jack, a former center with BC, snapped the ball to Doug Flutie on that infamous Hail Mary pass. And of course, his father out in Barcelona with a, with a World League. And Brewster now two runs for 36 yards on this drive. The melee in motion, and Brewster gets it again. Makes number 42 completely miss Byron Santiago, and Brewster gets up near the 23-yard line, and the lake flag comes in now. So after the punching, the yelling, the screaming, the coach is going to work, we have a late flag on this play. We're either going to see a makeup call right here, or we're going to see Louisiana Tech losing their cool, which is going to be very valuable down here late in this game inside the plus 20. After the ball was dead, personal foul. Defense, picking the player. Half the distance, automatic, first down. That's exactly what you're talking about, Kelly. I mean, it might not have been what the right thing that happened in that pile, but you can't retaliate. Right. It's always the second guy or the in the initial skirmish or the second guy on the second play that gets caught, and that's an indication of it right there. So Louisiana Tech helping June Jones and the Warriors of Hawaii here is Jack McNell is just beside himself. He can't believe it. He wants an explanation. And if you're a defensive player for the Louisiana Tech, you have to let your coach handle it. That's his responsibility. Let him work the officials and let him take care of it. You as a player play football. As you can say, don't do anything stupid. Right now, he's cost his defense or a few yards as the players now are trying to get an explanation of the officials. The Ruffin's number 98, who's in as a backup today anyway, and he's the one that's getting the wrath from the head coach right there. Ruffin, Moki Ruffin, took the place of Jamel Cage, your most productive defensive lineman. 
who has a shoulder injury, came into the game with 30 or 30 tackles and three sacks. You saw the referee, Bill Athens, right there, doing a great job of just getting both sides together to keep some cool right here. First and goal from the eight. Dang, pump move. Now goes to the corner. Has a wide receiver. Touchdown? Yes. They say touchdown. Number seven. Pomele. Say a Pomele. Makes the catch. The junior out of Oceanside, California, but his shoulder. There seems to be a problem with his shoulder. Actually, it might be Chad Owens on the outside. Starting from his slot, and he actually, I think, goes to the flat right there, and you'll see him turn up right there. The quarter does a good job of keeping him alive. The quarterback, Chang, and Chang, obviously, he's been around enough to do that, but Owens does a good job. Nothing in the flat, turning up the sideline to see if your quarterback can find you in the back of the end zone. Kelly, you're right. For melee number seven, and Owens' is jersey bunched up. Two couldn't see the bottom of it, but it is Owens. There's a yacht now. We'll try the extra point to tie the game. And it's good. Right now, these two teams have got combined to score 62 points, and there is still 12.08 remaining here in the fourth quarter. As Chang hooks up with Owens, and we have a tie ball game. in Hawaii Bowl in your face football with the UH Warriors. There's something about football on a Christmas day. It makes me warm and fuzzy inside. Put it on! The Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. In your face football with the UH Warriors. Budweiser, the king of beers, and K5, the home team, want to send you on a football flyaway with the University of Hawaii Warriors. All you have to do is go to your favorite Budweiser and Bud Light retailer and look for the entry box to win a trip for two to the UH Nevada football game at Reno on November 15th. Win airfare for two, hotel accommodations, game tickets, and more. Enter today. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, and K5, the home team. Proud supporters of the University of Hawaii Athletics. The I don't know much about cars, except how to wash them. So when I bought my new Nissan, I really had to rely on the people who sold it to me. That's why I went to Tony Nissan. It's a family-owned business, and I like that, because family is something I do know a little about. No one knows Nissans better than Tony Nissan at the Autoplex, Oahu's most experienced Nissan retailer since 1988. Lines. I love lines. I think lines can be truly wondrous things. I like them long, sleek, and a bit provocative. Lines can transform an environment, giving it a spirit that rises up and goes, look at me. Panasonic presents flat and thin TV. When ultimate style meets the ultra real picture of Panasonic, it's a beautiful thing. Panasonic. Ideas for life. Available at Panasonic dealers throughout Hawaii. Back in Russell, Louisiana, a WAC conference that started out very tactical and now has turned emotional. We're tied at 31, and Jack McNell, the head coach of Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, took him the entire break to calm down. He was getting after it on the sideline as we take a look at the quarter-by-quarter quarter scoring. I had deep. And the ball again for the second time today for Hawaii gets kicked out of bounds. And the Bulldogs are going to have great field position at the 35. You know, it's interesting, after all the fireworks and all the balls in the air and Moats running up the middle, 
It's about kickers kicking the ball out of bounds and kickers missing field goals that this game is about right now. And Louisiana Tech, the way they played offensively, they don't need an advantage. Well, I've said it once. I might as well say it again. The game could, we could, we could play this game without hey, kickers. brother, I am with you on that. <laughs> Who do we go to the, the powers that beat a petition for that move? So, Luke McCown takes over. He's 25 of 40, 331 and three touchdowns on the day. He has thrown an interception, and they work outside immediately on a little jailbreak swing pass to D.J. McCurry. It will pick up about six yards on the play before he's forced out of bounds. And the key to this is the blocking with his fellow receivers out there. And number 19, Eric Franklin, does a tremendous job. You talk about blocking someone where you think you have Velker on your uniform. He was absolutely <laughs> attached to that defensive back, which allowed that lane for Curry to get outside. Second and four. Kerr McCown continues to crawl up that NCAA all-time passing list. Most bounces way outside and cuts it up. Finally dragged down for a first down at the 47-yard line by David Gilmore, a gain of six. And what you said, Mark, right there is bounces way outside because the Hawaii defense has made the adjustment to take away that gashing motion up the middle that most was, had become accustomed to. So now the opening is going to be outside. Larry, or Lester, the, the tackle that was pulling on that play had to pull completely around the left end that time to try to find an opening. 26 of 187, both career highs today for Ryan Most. He gets the call again. This time bounces it way outside of the right side. He's got a crease down to the 30. Cuts back and finally tackled at the 28-yard line by Elamadini. What a tremendous job, not only of running the football, but the way he ran that time is he's patient at the line of scrimmage, and then he's going to cut it back. There's nothing to the left. Keep patient, patient, and then to the back side. So many times... The opening is to the back side of the running play. Great vision by a very good back right now. 26 yards on the carry. Hawaii, Louisiana Tech right here in Ruston, Louisiana. Mark Malone and Kelly Stopper with you. Hope you're enjoying the game as this kid, Ryan Moses, tear it up. He picks up eight yards on that carry. And he's going to go over the 200-yard mark eventually here. <laughs> Unbelievable. About the only thing we didn't cover offensively coming into this game is the possibility of a running back ha having over 200 yards in the game, let alone 100. But Moats has done a great job. And that offensive line for Louisiana Tech is absolutely handing it to that defensive front from Hawaii. That's guy telling me 221 yards rushing today on the day for Moats. On can't call a timeout they have none left so Luke McCown confused didn't see something he liked he tried to call a timeout but that's going to be a penalty it's kind of like the Chris Weber play in basketball Absolutely. remember the Fab Five yeah the good thing is this isn't happening in the championship game but my goodness it says a quarterback Mark we're taught you come up to the line of scrimmage Thing number one, you find your play clock only before you find your safety. Absolutely. And he didn't do it that time. Absolutely. Very good point. So, make it second and seven now. Back to Moat. Off the left side. And he's up to about the 22-yard line, but there's a flag on the play. Isaac Sopoanga, the all whack defensive tackle was there to make the stop, but they're going to call holding on the Bulldogs. Every time we mention the offensive line, something like this happens. They haven't had a holding all day long, and that left side in particular have been tremendous. 64 Aaron Lips and 68 Lester Brown have done a tremendous job, and that's what happens also when you expand the running game, the possibility of a hold increases because they're trying to get the running back to the outside that takes longer. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the dead yard ball spot. Still second down. Well, we talked about the air being filled with footballs, but I'll tell you what, Ryan Moats has had one heck of an impact on this football game. There's no doubt about it. You look at that first half, nine carries, 49 yards. Second half, 172 yards on 19 carries. He's had nearly 300 total yards of offense. You expect that out of a quarterback, not a running back. McCown, lots of time. Drops it down to Moats. Moats breaks another tackle. 
puts a big hit on a couple of Hawaii defenders, including Peters. It gets out near a first down, a gain of six yards on the play. And Peters is slow to get up because of that blow that Moats actually gave him. But Moats is coming out of the game also because he was a little dinged up, I think, on his right shoulder that time. Also, and McCown is down on his knees. They have no timeouts left, so they, they're going to have to have the official bear, bail him out right here. It has to be late. He hangs in there a long time, but I think it's the shot to the head right there as he's falling down. But look at that blow that Moats delivers to <laughs> Peters coming up there on that play. So that'll bring in Maxi Kazi, a 6'5", 200-pound senior from West Monroe High School. A consummate backup. Consummate backup and an interesting story about his lineage here at the university. Danny Wilson now at running back for the Bulldogs. Moats gets a rest. Kazi rolls right, flags down, and then throws the football away. He might have got a wide to jump offside. And what a heavy quarterback as, a, as an experienced backup quarterback. You come in and your first play, you use a hard count. Very veteran-like play by that quarterback. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. See, that's what a heavy quarterback does. You know, as a backup quarterback, you could just lollygag all you want in practice, but he's not that type of player. And Big Nail told us that. He studies. He comes to practice with a smile on his face every day, and he prepares, and it shows up and plays just like that. Well, Moats is back in the football game now at running back after that big hit. Maxi Causey is at quarterback. His talent. Tries to collect himself on the sideline after a hit. Kazi out of the shotgun, throws it to nobody over the middle of the field. And Kazi, we mentioned an interesting lineage here at the university. He is the... <laughs> well, there it is. Since the 1940s, seven decades, he has had a family member play here at Louisiana Tech. Tom, the uncle, he was an All-American. Of course, Maxi here, as you said, the consummate backup. This goes all the way back to the 40s, and we understand wow. that Maxi only has a sister left, so it's right. likely to end at this point. You're unless right. Maxi has some children and sends them back here to the university. It's going to end for about 18, 20 years anyway. Doby from 40 yards out. Plenty of leg, and finally he hits one. Josh Doby. After most McGowan go out with injuries. Maxi Kazi leads him down the field and secures a field goal from Josh Scobie. And the Bulldogs are back on top by a field goal. It's 34-31. Timmy Chang and that Hawaii offense coming back right after this. As they might, they still can't catch us. The GMC Sierra. Get a Sierra 1500 extended cab available with a light duty power pack, including 5.3 liter V8 HD trailering and more, and a $1,000 discount. Add the discount to cash back for a total value of $3,500. See the pros at your Hawaii GMC dealers. It's Hawaii, Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Just 15 minutes from the Honolulu Airport, find 20 acres of water fun activities and slides like Hurricane Bay, Volcano Express, and Keiki Cove. Go to HawaiianWaters.com for more information on park hours, group sales, special events, birthday parties, and annual passes. Or call us. Get set to get wet at Hawaiian Waters Adventure Park. Absolutely the most fun you'll ever have in the water. Salutes you, Mr. Footlong Hot Dog Inventor. Mr. Footlong Hot Dog Inventor. When conventional wisdom said no one could make a hot dog longer than six inches, you dared to dream. Dared to dream. The crowd cheered your 10 inch wiener. Wait, you said, I can give you two more inches. Oh. So make it a Bud Light, mister, for giving us all a bigger wiener. Is precision engineering a luxury or a necessity? Is performance a measure of capability or of appeal? Does sumptuous leather provide a soothing ride or a more exhilarating one? 
However you pursue perfection, may it always be with passion. Serve Coalexis. Back in Ruston, Louisiana. Louisiana Tech now down by a field goal as that man, Conroy Hines, the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, will have his turn. We're well over 1,000 yards combined. Total offense in this football game. Zayat sends it deep to receive Eric Newman from about the 8-yard line. He's got some space up the right side. He gets it out to about the 37-yard line. The first returns we've seen on kickoff today. Yeah, that's because on that penalty, it was actually Colmene in the end zone catching that touchdown pass. And, and I had in Ferreira, David in Ferreira, that he wouldn't have been there before. Colmene knows better. And this is directly related to that penalty because now in college, you can take the penalty on the kickoff that moved the kicker clear back to the 20 yard line. So Luke McCown, who spent a couple of uh, plays on the sideline hurting a little bit, is back at the game along with Ryan Mose, who's just been spectacular here today. And the blitz comes. They hand the ball off to Mose. He weaves his way, dances left, Mose. right, back to the left, the picks up the maybe two and a half yards before Hiram Peters, the strong safety, is in the hole to make the stop. Well, certainly time now for this Hawaii defense to make a stand. Would you say, Kelly? Oh, absolutely. It's it's high time for someone to make a stand. And that time, they're making adjustments and bringing pressure inside to try to shut down number 20, not number 11, which is the interesting thing. Show blitz again up middle, and they throw it outside. A little screen pass to Curry. Makes one man miss and gets out to the 45-yard line. Peters again on the stop after a 15-yard game. Great play call. Hawaii on the last play showed that they're going to come inside. What does the offense do? You go outside. A little bubble screen to Curry that time. Great execution. Great play calling. Well, I'll tell you, you have to give a lot of credit to Conroy Hines, the offensive coordinator as Hawaii now has called the timeout. We talk so much about this chess game, and this is what makes football so special. If you can eventually get it right. The question is, can you get it right in time and call it at the right time? You're right. They have 744 left to be the last team that scores here today and, and win this football game. But that is, that's so intriguing. And Hines has done a great job. Lumpkin has done a great job. Then Hines again has done a great job. And, and conversely, the coordinators for the, you know, going the other direction as well. But, you know, you have plenty of time, obviously. The thing that you don't have, Mark, going down the stretch here, you have zero timeouts if you're Louisiana Tech because you burn them because of not managing the play clock, clock very well. Guy on the right side there, Rick Smith, one of the co-defensive coordinators. Not the most popular guy here when Hawaii comes into town. He's had a real burden today. He's had three defensive starters out of the lineup. He's had to shift people around. They've managed to hold Hawaii to 37 points. They've made some great adjustments, but obviously people come to this game to see offense. Yeah, and you said it managed to hold Hawaii thus far to 37 points. That actually is a good thing. Ryan Motes, the running back, is now aligned at the bottom of your screen to the left. There's a wide receiver. They throw it back out to Curry on the swing screen, and Curry finally looked like he was going to break a big one. He's down to the 32-yard line. Kevin Milhouse makes the stop after a 13-yard pickup, but it's enough for a first down. And this is the true bubble screen, just thrown to the inside receiver, bubbling off the line. Right, that defender right there is on the ground because of number 19, Eric Franklin, absolutely cut him to the ground a great play and I think that's a player that's hurt right now well Luke McCown with that's an injury will come to the sideline to discuss with his coaches what's going on as we take a look at them work on the Hawaii defender I think it's 42 not no, it was 42 Mel, Leonard Peters that got cut to the ground right Mel there. Purcell the defensive end has been extremely active in this game and this is what you get you know you get these bubble screens these jailbreak screens we talked about it not only dangerous for the wide receiver but these guys are turning and running there's a lot of crisscross traffic in there that is an excellent point because the linemen inside they're used to being hit from certain angles but when they have to pursue that's when they get into trouble when they get out in space they don't know how to protect themselves and that's probably the result of it right there he looked good coming off the field though that's a good sign off under his own steam but it moves the chains for La Tech. they are first down and 10 now from the 32 yard line with 730 remaining here in this football game trailing by a field goal Blitz, the toss to Moe, sees a crease, hammers it up inside, back to the right side, still running down to the 11-yard line. Kevin Milhouse, the corner, saves the touchdown.
but a big game and a big day today for Ryan Motes. And the play calling is impeccable right here. You have the the defense coming inside, you have a quick pitch outside, absolutely perfect play for inside pressure. And Motes, we've already seen, knows what to do with it when he gets it in his hands. 18 yards on the pickup. You'll have Jack McNell rethinking his offensive <laughs> philosophy if he's running like that. The fake and the bootleg by McCown. Down inside, close to the five yard line. We'll call it the six yard line where he's pushed out by Leonard Peters. This is the next building block off of that run that we've seen be so effective giving it to Motes. This time they fake it right there, invite the defense, play action, go around the outside. And McCown has the ability to do that right there. He sets Leonard Peters, number 42, kind of in his tracks, a little wiggle in his step, and then he gets outside. Play call off of all the running that Motes has done. 31 rushes for 241. He has 322 total offensive yards to running back. He gets the pitch here. Right side, cuts it back up inside. Touchdown, Love Tech. Well, what is so impressive to me, Mark, about this running back is, one, he's young, but he's shown a great deal of patience and vision right here. Initially, there's nothing outside. Eric, Adrian Gonzalez, and then he sees the crease. Boom, he's up inside and into the end zone. A sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, Bishop Lynch High School. 5'8", 208 pounds, and he has just lit it up here at IA Stadium in Ruston, Louisiana. Scobie, the extra point. Good. And it's a four-point ball game now. That mixed extra point by Hawaii could come back to haunt them. Louisiana Tech leads now. 41 to 37. Back on the field. Timmy Chang in that exciting Hawaii offense. All right, we need a name for our new chicken breast strips. Something that says these new chicken breast strips are real, like our old ones, but much bigger because they're sliced right from the breast. Mm. Bigger breasts. Real breasts. <laughs> Big, plump breasts. Huge breasts. Um, big, uh... Don't go there, Phil. I'm Juliet with a few friends and 120 new Ford trucks and SUVs to carry immediately at McKenna's. And we're going to show you some incredible figures. A big new Ford Expedition, buy one now, 6000 below the actual manufacturer's price. 6000 below the manufacturer's price. Here's your figure on a Ford Escape SUV. Nothing down, just 352 a month. You own it. In the final 03 model liquidation, the figures say it all. Come and visit us at McKenna's and Kailua, ASAP. Calling all volleyball fans on Sunday, October 19th, T-Mobile is sponsoring the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Match against Pac-10 member Arizona at the Stan Sheriff Center. Come out to cheer on the Wahine players, currently ranked number two in the nation, and be sure to sign up for the T-Mobile contest to win some insane prizes. For tickets, call 944-BOWS before it's too late. See you there. Go Rainbow Wahine! Log Tech cheerleaders, certainly fans of offense here as Hawaii trails their Bulldogs. 37-41, 6.45 remaining in this game. Between these two teams with 6.45 remaining, 1,152 yards of total combined offense. And we've still got some football to play as Scobie sends this deep. Again, way out of the back of the end zone, no return. Hawaii will get it at the 20. Man, he has a boomer. That's a good way to limit the return yards to zero, is just kick it clear to the scoreboard. It's what we find even in the National Football League, you, you find so often. It's not a guy who just kicks field goals. You've got to be able to, to create field position on the kickoff. Absolutely. That's a great point. And it's a technique. And I mean, it, there's a lot of strength involved in that. But if you can't kick it out of the end zone, it's positioning and where you kick it. But you have to kick it deep. And that's the best way to do it right there. So Michael Brewster now lines up in the backfield along with Timmy Chang. 6.45 remaining, first and 10 from the 20. Chang, the screen outside. And incomplete. 
Corey Brazil was there to make the hit. And what a hit it was. Corey Brazil right here reacts. He's in man-to-man, -man, so this type of reaction is just straightforward. Get there before that big tackle coming out there to obliterate you can get to you. Daniel Inferreira, the intended receiver. Seen spot duty today. Brazil has played through a foot injury and played big in this game. Already an interception, several pass breakups. Chang over the middle finds his receiver who takes a knee. 12 yards on the pickup for Britton Komeny. But there's a flag on the play. Foul on play. First down. They picked the flag up, no foul. And the thing that's going to be important right here is for Louisiana Tech to pit, pick their spots when they play man to man, but mainly keep the ball in front of them. Make this team right now for Hawaii prove that they can be efficient and move down the field. You see the shadows now as we look at Chang's numbers. Four touchdowns with the four interceptions. You wonder if he'll try to work the right side of the field. The receivers don't have to worry about the sun as Brewster. Crashes through that defensive front out near the 45-yard line before Gavin Cato brings him down, a pickup of 13. And Mark, that's a running play that easily could have went to the house because Hawaii caught Louisiana Tech bringing pressure, this time on the outside. Watch him move up. They're bringing pressure from the secondary and from the linebacker position. That's the only guy left right there is Galvin Cato. If he doesn't make the play, Brewster's dancing in the end zone right now. Brewster. Nine carries for 54 yards, most of those in the back. Half of the game as Chang goes outside to Comedy on the little hitch route. Corey Brazil knocks him out of bounds. Five yards on the pickup. Corey Brazil did, did a great job on that, coming, reacting out of the zone defense, making a good play. But also, you have the left tackle, Chris Van Hoy, number 96, hustling out of that spot. And I think that's going to be the difference maker. Who's in the better condition? Hawaii, what I've seen, is a, is a different team here on the mainland than they are on the island. Second and four. Look at the cross, and the ball is knocked down. Byron Santiago and Wendell Crow, the defensive end, were there to knock the ball down. As we check in now on the wax scores from around the country, Boise State having their way with SMU beating them 45 to three. Nevada and Tulsa in a close overtime game. Nevada winning by a touchdown, and Navy no problem with Rice. 38-6, a final score there as well. That Tulsa team is a nice team. I saw them beat Hawaii two weeks ago. They're a nice team. They probably won't figure into the race this year, but years to come, I think they will. Third down and four. They throw outside to Chad Owens, who picks up the reception and another Hawaii first down. There really isn't anything special about this play. Chad Owens just flat outruns Jaron Wisham on the coverage. That's all there is. A speed cut to the outside, make an accurate throw, pick up the first down. Timmy Chang has so often won games on the final possession, perhaps some of, sometimes the final pass of the game. With 520 left in this ball game, very comfortable operating this wide open offense. Plenty of time, plenty of time looking down the field, and again, finds Hughes, who was swarmed by a couple of defenders at the 24-yard line. Derek Farrell and Jerron Wisham were there, but 18 yards on the pickup, and Owens is figuring big here in the fourth quarter. But he, he was a guy that was suspended seven catches, 138 yards and a touchdown. He was suspended early in the season, and they missed him dearly. He plays that slot receiving position. He's been big going to the corner just like that time there. Only 5'9", 175 pounds, a junior from Honolulu. Hawaii threatens again. Chang sprints right, shovel pass inside the Brewster. Weaves around. Finally brought down at about the 12 yard line. Six yards on the pickup before LaCroix Street or LaCroix Street is there for the Bulldogs. 
It's a nice little play. You invite the rush. LaCorey Street and Wendell Crow come in right there, flip the ball in between them, and let Brewster get some business up the field. We haven't seen that today. That's a little different look on this drive, but June Jones is calling the plays. He's going to bring it all Ooh. out. Ooh. 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 515 Ooh. yards on the day. For Chang, a shovel again. Brewster, blockers in front, cuts it back. Inside the five, touchdown That's Hawaii. To Brewster, <laughs> touchdown Hawaii. Wow. And June Joe knows more than anybody. A lot of times the offensive coordinator, if it works one way, you flip it and do the same thing to the opposite side. This time, if it worked that way, let's do it the exact same way again. Invite the rush, a little left-handed flip up in between them, and then Brewster knows what to do. And Uriah Mauanoa right there absolutely annihilated any defender that was out in front. And when you're as big as he can, you can do some annihilating now. Mokeed Ruffins, the defensive end, twice fooled on that shovel pass as Ayat kicks the extra point through. And we're back to a three-point ball game. It's gone back and forth and back and forth. June Jones, Timmy Chang, that Hawaii offense drives down the field 80 yards, scores on a shovel pass to Tim Brewster to take a three-point lead over Louisiana Tech. And this is a little change up by the Hawaii offense right here. This is the second time we've seen this. The previous play was time number one. Give the defense, especially in the plus 20 ter territory, in a big drive, a little something that they haven't seen. And you see Uriah right there, number 64, absolutely annihilate the linebacker and get his running back into the end zone. So Brewster, much like Ryan Most has had a big impact on this football game, especially here in the second half. June you know, Jones, again, you talk about it. I mean, this guy's got so much experience, not only as a former quarterback, but a guy that has been just about at every level, the professional level. Herman Frazier told us at halftime that you signed him to do a, five, a new five-year extension. And if I'm a quarterback playing in college, i got to think real hard about going to Hawaii. You're going to get perhaps some of the best coaching in college football. Great point. Great recru recruiting tool in and of himself. Jerron Wisher takes the ball. Up the right side and it's upended near the 25 yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs, Jack Picknell's offense, will take over with 3.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. I think where you've seen some tongues hanging a little bit is on Hawaii's defensive side of the football. You can see if, if Hawaii is able to come up with anything right now, any, any adjustments Lumpkin can make to try to slow down Luke and the boys right here on this drive. 1,230 combined offensive yards put in the stats books today so far. We've got more football to play as McCown works out of the shotgun. Bad snap, falls on it. But that'll be a loss of seven yards on the play. It's an interesting play right here, Mark. Yesterday when we're talking to head coach Big Nell, it's this type of thing that he's seen way too often, and it shoots yourself in the foot, especially in moments like this. As the quarterback, even when the snap is off a little bit, your first job, keep your eye on the ball, secure the football, and then you have something to do. Since we do a lot of good things, we work well in practice, he goes, sometimes the guys just don't realize it's the little things that hurt you. Blitz, the count, retreats, and then throws the ball back inside, almost intercepted. It was intended for Moats. The two Hawaii defenders were closing quickly. Tell you what, this hits left defensive end number 93, Houston Aller, right in the chest. And we talked about that. When you have a screen that really has a boarded, you have to give it up. There are sometimes the defense wins and they sniffs it out right here. Screen isn't developed, throw the ball away. Houston Aller right there should have had that for a huge play this late in the game. But again, a blitz coverage, which is man-to-man, -man, and oftentimes screens aren't designed to work against man-to-man -man coverage. Town under pressure, works left, then throws the ball outside and finds his wide receiver, Eric Franklin. And Franklin gets up near the 45-yard line, a bulldog first down. That's impressive. You know, as old quarterbacks, Mark, we can appreciate this. Everyone watching the game can appreciate this. A right-handed quarterback, Moving to his left. Under pressure. Under pressure at an important part in the game where you need a big play because you just put one on the ground, and this is the result. That's what prepares this young man for the next level. That play right there sums it up. 26 yards on a critical third down play for McCown. 
He goes back to work with Moats. Cuts it back to the left side. Finds a crease and down to the 42-yard line. David Gilmore, the free safety, was there to make a stop after a 12-yard game. Good job of going back to the run. You have plenty of time left. You really, every play in the playbook is live right now. Moats is doing a good job. You just have to pick your opportunities to run the football. A great call by Hines. And I'm seeing a little lack of aggressiveness with that front seven for Hawaii right now. It has definitely slowed that rush down. Unless Hawaii chooses to blitz, they haven't gotten much pressure in the second half. The pitch again to Moats outside, cuts it inside, and then brought down by the linebacker, Ikaika Curtin, for a gain of about three yards on the play. Ikaika did a great job that time of maintaining inside leverage as a, as a linebacker because he knew he had Travis LeBoy, his defensive end, doing a good job of working outside, and he's going to push that run right back to him. Yeah. Number 72, Adrian Gonzalez, the right tackle, for the Bulldogs is on the ground and being attended to right now. 6'5", 297, a junior out of Dallas, Texas, played at Skyline High School. There's a little help getting up, and this, yeah. we don't like to speculate, but obviously a lower limb problem. This Louisiana Tech offensive line, were, they were banged up early in the year. They had to move some people around. Adrian actually started inside at guard early in the year, and they found out he was a better defense or offensive tackle. Move him outside. So a hold the bill on the offensive line now for the Bulldogs. Line up three wide right. Pressure coming. The little slip screen outside again to DJ Curry. Kevin Milhouse makes the tackle, but four yards for the Bulldogs. That's a nice little play to call when your right tackle is new in there. Let Marcus Lindsay, number 78, kind of get his feet on the ground a little bit because you don't want to have to protect long when you just replaced your starting offensive tackle. Actually, they've moved number 55, Jordan Lang, out to the right tackle spot now. The count goes to work. Intended for Eric Franklin, a little high, but he can't hang on. They actually talked to us about possibly doing that mark lang actually started the season outside at tackle and if they have any kind of injury they just move gilmore up to that guard position and that's what they've done here so we've got a three-point ball game by virtue of the hawaii missed extra point and that brings on josh scobie it's fourth and two the ball's on the 35 yard line so we're going to see about let me see here about a 50 two yard 53 yard attempted field goal his long of the year is 53 he's had one blocked earlier today to tie the game it's up it's wobbling and he's hooked it it might have been partially blocked but josh scobie misses a 53 yard attempt and hawaii now has a three-point lead with a minute 22 remaining in this football game and then very well could have been a great kicker peaking just a little bit because his last attempt actually two two attempts ago was blocked right there you peak you try to kind of subconsciously block, kick around that attempt at blocking the field goal just a little bit we saw him in pregame warm-ups easily kicked from 65 63 yards without any problem remember now Louisiana Tech had used up all their timeouts they have none remaining all Timmy Chang and this football team from Hawaii needs to do is take a knee a couple of times and they're going to get their first road win of the season. Well, if you're Louisiana Tech, I mean, if you thought this thing out beforehand, if it can go down to a big kick and you have a kicker like Josh Kobe, you would take that any day. I know Coach Bicknell would have, but sometimes you just don't get it done. Tough day for that man. His fifth year here at Louisiana Tech. What a great performance he got out of his young running back, Ryan Motes. Got another good performance today out of his quarterback, Luke McCowan. But it's not enough. A missed field goal by Josh Scobie, an attempt of 53 yards. And Timmy Chang is just going to take a knee. Now yeah, there's the reaction right there. They know as well as anybody the ability that Josh Scobie has right there. And so they're looking at maybe going into overtime. Um, but he just pulls it a little bit to the left. It's going to bring up now a uh, 
third down and two. There's only 14 seconds remaining. The clock is ticking down. All Timmy Chang has to do is take a knee. And a big Western Athletic Conference victory now for Hawaii over Louisiana Tech to stay in the hunt for a conference title to play in that Hawaii Bowl on Christmas over at Aloha Stadium. June Jones, a great job. Jack McNell, certainly a bitter defeat for his program. Oh, anytime it goes down to the wire and involves a kick to either go into overtime or even win a game, it's hard to take. And when you, you're a head coach and you see your guys fighting their guts out, this kind of loss is probably tougher than getting blown out because there's no more moral victories for this program. He said it, and they almost got done it, it done today. But in the end, Chang had the answer. Well, June Jones will host UTEP next week back in Hawaii. That should be a good game, certainly, as Louisiana Tech, they will go to Nevada to play a game against Nevada. The final score here, Hawaii winning 44 to 41. It was an offensive shootout. What we expected, great performances from quarterbacks and their supporting cast. But Timmy Chang, June Jones, and the Warriors come out on top. For Kelly Stoker, I'm Mark Malone. And for everybody here on our ESPN Plus crew, we thank you for joining us in Ruston, Louisiana, where the Hawaii Warriors beat Louisiana Tech 44-41.